And I'm going to send out a tweet and a quick Facebook post as well, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, I'm doing the Skype thing. <clears throat> I get commercials. Yeah, all right, looks like we're all good. All right, we're good to go. We are live. How's it going, everybody? Uh, as you can see, I'm here with fellow Team Online member Greg de Warsaw. How you doing today, Greg? Doing well. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, thanks for doing this. So a couple weeks ago, did the same thing with uh, Lady Macy, where we basically just analyzed hand histories uh, submitted by you guys, submitted by the viewers, and I got pretty good feedback uh, while doing that. So I wanted to do it again today. Uh, this time obviously with Greg. So I guess it's probably easiest to start with just explaining how you guys can actually submit the hand histories to us. So just give me one sec. There, I mean there's a couple different ways, right? The, the easiest way is if you guys just have uh, Boom Replayer links, then that's by far the best option if you just basically post uh, the boom links into uh, the chat. Greg and I can see them there and then we can just open them up and go from there. Uh, if you guys don't have uh, if you guys don't have the boom replayer link saved uh, then you can go into your database, go into your Holdem manager, your poker tracker, uh, find the hands that you want to talk about and I can only speak for Holdem Manager, but all you all you need to do is get the text format of the hand histories. So in your Holdem Manager, you would basically just find the hand you want us to talk about, uh, right click on it and press copy, and then that's gonna grab the text format. And then there's a lot of websites out there that you can use, but I'm gonna show you guys one that I've been recommending. It's called pokerhandreplays.com. And I'll bring it up. And once you have the text copied, you basically just go to the website, uh, scroll down to, I haven't done this in a while, I think it's just, is it import hand history probably? Yeah, just import hand history and then you come down to this text box and then you just click on it and then you just go right click and paste and that's gonna paste your hand history right in the box and then you just go down here uh, one thing to note is that you should enter a title uh, for your hand, otherwise it spoils the results. So uh, it can be something really simple, maybe just like the hands that you have, maybe some reads, like maybe if you know somebody's uh, recreational player, ace, ace, first, recreational, or whatever. And then go down a little further and press continue, and that's going to convert the hand and give you a link. And then just paste the link into the Twitch chat box, and we'll see it that way. So that's how it's going to work. Um, it looks like we already got a link in the chat, so uh, I'm just going to grab a coffee, so maybe just for two seconds, Greg, I guess most of your viewers know what you play and your whole story and everything, but do you mind just like saying what... The teams... whole story? Yeah, the whole... <laughs> you want me to tell the story? No, whole no, story? Just, okay. the, just, just the 30 <laughs> second version, uh, I'm not going to be gone that long. Just tell people what you play, how long you've been playing uh, playing for, and maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit about your poker background for... Uh, for my viewers that might not be aware. I'll be back in two seconds. Okay, so as most of you know, my name is Zawarso and I'm from po Warsaw, Poland. And I'm a, a member of team, uh, team Pro Online since the beginning. So this will be the end of sixth year now, if I uh, can count correctly. And I'm playing uh, six, max cash, six max cash games for last probably the same amount of time, so five, six years. Uh, I also play some tournaments, but mostly on Sundays, so usually you can find me on No Limit 100, No Limit 200 cash games, Zoom, and, uh, and, and regular turbos as well. And that's why I would prefer, of course, to analyze some of the six max hands, but we can do, I think we can do everything you sent. Uh, tournaments, uh, sit and goes, 
Uh, also four in cash games, that would be mostly for, for Tyler, I guess. Um, and, um, and that's it. So let's, and, uh, since we wait for Tyler, I also want to say, uh, of course, hello everyone to, uh, um, in the chat, and I hope we spend some nice time together. Uh, we try to make some fun as well, uh, in addition to analysis. So if you, someone of you has the um, Photoshop skills, let's say, then we'll be running a little contest. This contest will be to make as funny as possible meme of Frosty and I in like any situation. Just just make it funny. When when Tyler comes back from from Starbucks, when he apparently went, uh, he will show you one of the gifts uh, that we we laugh on very hard every time we see it. So this would give you the idea what we are looking for, and to make it worthy. I will personally transfer ten dollars to to the best meme made um, today. So I hear that Tyler is probably with us already. Yeah, you just, you tell him about the contest. His cat or something. Yes, I pretty much explained what the contest will be about, but I, I wanted you to show the uh, yeah. this this meme so so it gets it gives people the idea. Yeah. Okay. So there's I don't know if you guys have seen this meme that uh, has been around there for a little while now I, it's uh, uh, it's pretty annoying it's uh, Greg just get the link. <laughs> can you just post the link in the twitch chat because I can't really dig it up with all these windows open. Uh, okay I can I, I, I was hoping you can maybe put it on the screen so I can enjoy no yeah no I will this I will probably just... next like two hours yeah <laughs> this is actually what I can do for next two hours if that would be fine with you just post it on the on your on your webcam no uh, no, I, I want okay. I want this meme gone. It's basically, uh, <laughs> basically, uh, it's basically when Greg took down this tournament or, or didn't take it down, but I, I did. Finish. Yeah, I failed. I was fourth. Uh, he's won so much money in tournaments, and uh, and I haven't won anything. And he's <laughs> he's always bragging about how well his Twitch channel is doing, and and I have three I'm followers, so. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, basically, Luca, uh, another member of Team Online, made this meme that pretty much sums up Greg's year uh, or even poker career uh, against mine. So it's it's pretty tilting. It's uh, as you can see, Greg with all the money and Frosty's angry face poking out of the bottom there. So I'd really like somebody to make a meme uh, that's different than this. Maybe uh, maybe one where Frosty no, has all the money. I and... I think we should st stick to this theme. Uh, it's just just like maybe. Focus on this kind of uh, memes. <laughs> no, definitely don't focus on Greg having all the money. But if somebody out there can make a meme that uh, involves Greg and I, uh, yeah, the, the best meme out there is going to get ten bucks on Poker Stars. Uh, why, why don't why doesn't Greg send five bucks and I'll send five bucks to the winner? So ten dollars. Uh, unless meme. unless it will be like really showing me the way it sh this gift is showing me now, then I can I can send the full ten dollars. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna send anybody <laughs> money for if they make something like this. It's got to be something where Frosty, uh, Frosty has all the money and Greg, uh, Greg's angry. So, little side contest <laughs> if you guys want to get in on that. Yes, that would be real money. So it will be. I hope it will be worthy of some of your time. You probably have around two hours to do it. So yeah, we'll probably be streaming less. for about two hours. So yeah, I know there's some pretty talented Photoshop people out there, but it, so if you guys can make some memes with Greg and I. Uh, post them. They should be. A lot of fun. Maybe be maybe we should just point out that it doesn't have to be animated, right? It could be just regular photoshopped photo. Uh, no yeah. need to make it animated. That would be maybe too difficult, too time consuming. Yeah, yeah, no. It can just be a meme. It can just be a picture, Photoshop picture. So let's get back on track here. Uh, it looks like uh, Kaylin Claudiu has posted a boom link, and so has Dan Witt. So. We'll just try to go in order. Uh, last time we did this with Lady Macy, uh, it worked out pretty well. Um, sometimes people were posting three or four hand links in a row, so I'm gonna try to like give everybody a turn. But for now, we'll just go down the list. So uh, I'll open up the first link here and start us off. Uh, How you right? What'll happen is we'll just alternate between Greg and I, and uh, alternate between taking the lead, and then we'll both chime in. Uh, chime in on each street if it if is necessary. So, so here we go. Uh, where is the sound on this thing? Oh, here it is. Yeah, I'll mute that sound. 
That's for on my request, and I appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's a good idea. So it looks like we're playing a tournament here, big 4.4. I mean, I might as well just give Greg every single tournament hand that gets posted because <laughs> he's made five figures in tournament scores at least, and I've probably lost that much. <laughs> I feel bad now. I can't. Be, um, <laughs> we're just making fun. I hope everyone understands this. Uh, so, uh, okay, so you want me to take this one, start this one? Yeah, do you mind? It looks like we got King Jack and... Yes, King Jack nice. of Under the Gun, this uh, looks like a uh, very early stage. Uh, 440, I think this is fair level, it should be 1020 and 1530 before. We have full nine, nine people at the table, King Jack of Under the Gun. Uh, at this, uh, later this could be... Uh, easy fault like we, we when we would be much where well, we would not we not be so deep this one I can understand the open and uh, but I would prefer people that would open King Jack off under the gun nine nine uh, uh, nine person table to know that they play very, very well at uh, post flop because this can this kind of hand can make can put us in many different spots and we just need to make sure that we'll not do anything stupid uh, at the flop and we're able to get away from, I don't know, maybe some tricky hands. But okay, that saying, uh, we see that this hand will open and then we get flat cold on the second position under the gun plus plus one and then we get squeezed from the third positions, so under the gun plus two, so I can already say that we can move on to the next hand because this will be very easy fold. Yeah, I agree. I think we just have too much reverse implied odds by calling here, right? And it's just we're not going to flop that well very often. Um, so yeah, I think it's a very actually, easy fold pre-flop, but let's... Uh, yeah, actually, actually, I think we, we can... Uh, King Jack offsuit here, it's probably one of the worst hands to call. I, w I could find some argument, I'll be still folding, but I could pr more likely to find argument to call with any Broadway hand that would be suited. Something like King Jack uh, suited, King Queen suited, I would not do that anyway, but I, would, I can discuss it a little bit more. Uh, also, I could understand more calling here with some pairs, like seven or eight. Or maybe even with something like nine and nine nine eight suited, but definitely not King Jack off. All the hands I said previously, I would still fold. But this this would be like one of the worst hands to call because we are so so often will be dominated here, and even flopping a king or jack most often would give us into the trouble uh, instead of giving us the the good hand. But uh, what I wanted to say before uh, as well is. Uh, what do we expect here by calling here? What do we think that uh, player number two is squeezing with? Do we put him on what? Ace 10? That doesn't make any sense. Um, I don't know, pair of seven? That, that doesn't make any sense. Ace king makes sense. Aces, kings, ace queen suited. All the hands that we. Um, uh, that dominates us, they would, it would make sense for him to squeeze. So this is additional, uh, I think, argument. This is like one of the easiest fault, faults you can probably imagine. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah, yeah. I think we're laying into him a little too much here. I think he gets it. Uh, probably shouldn't be calling pre flop. <laughs> no, but... this is this is nothing against the player that did play this hand. Yeah, it's no, just, I know, but uh, he, yeah, he says he even admits in the chat he he was in domination nation as he puts it. So uh, let's look past the call for now. Um, just moving forward a bit in the hand here, so we call, player one calls as well, and I mean, this is kind of what you were talking about, I mean, we get pretty much the best flop we could hope for, uh, king, king, four, um, but I mean, obviously, I don't think we can probably get away from the hand anymore, but if all the money goes in, we're, we're dominated pretty often, but let, let's see how it plays out, so like I said, we called, player one called, and it's going okay, to Okay, now, as played, to. yeah, as played, there is no, absolutely no need for us to lead on this flop because we can fold hands like, I don't know, ace queen, ace jack, pair of sevens, anything like that. We don't want those hands to fold. We want them to stick around for a, for a little bit. So, but I've seen players 
sometimes do like you know they have two and a half thousand and they suddenly like lead for the pot here which makes absolutely no room for other players uh, in the hand to do something stupid if they would like to do that or even make a simple continuation bet with something like ace jack but also um, if someone because i think players does it because they're afraid that they lose value um, and they i don't know they probably think they, they'll be called down by a pair of tens uh, but this if, he, if someone has strong hand enough to continue, then don't worry, he will continue anyway. So you don't need to scare them away and give them the chance to bluff or maybe value bets um, less premium hand than, than yours. Uh, I zoned out there, but I, I agree with everything that Greg said. So anyways, we, we see a small C bet. Um, would you, I don't know, did you just cover that? Would you call or, or, or would you raise this bet? Uh, he bets about a third pot. Um, yeah, this looks like more like a filler bet. If he did the squeeze with, uh, I don't know, let's say aces or 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 queens or ace king. Well, okay, let's go back to ace king later uh, because this is a different story. But it seems like um, I want to get some value, but either I'm not sure if I want to get some cold, but I still don't want to give you guys a free card. So, but this is also very, very regular sized bet at the moment. This is there is actually no need for him. Let's say we have no king jack here. Let's say we have like jack ten. We have absolutely nothing. So from his pers his perspective, it doesn't change anything if we if he bets here for 450 or he bets 8 800 right so that's why i really like this uh this this sizing and right, what no, i do I I, I, yeah and what, what i do i just call we still have player, one player behind maybe if we come along maybe he decides to overcall with i uh, know eights or nines mm -hmm. so we we want to keep in the game so i would just call yeah i, I agree with all that and we do call and player one calls as well. Uh, and we see a nine of spades on the turn. Um, <laughs> I assume we're still just checking to the preflop razor at this point, or would uh, there's probably a little bit more merit to leading the turn now, I guess, but uh, it's not usually something that I do anyways. Well, now it's uh, 2,625 in the pot. All of the remaining players are uh, have less than pot, but still, we just going all in as first here now, we can easily make hands like aces or queens to fold. Uh, mm -hmm. Because they would simply be just bluff catching at the moment. So uh, I, I understand that some players cannot fold hands like this. So they would uh, still engage here with aces even if you go all in. But if they want to engage, they will do it anyway. And we have two players behind. So And we know one of them doesn't have a king. So one of them must have something else, and it's either something like medium pair, over pair, or it still could be, I can see player one having here fours or nines as well, but we cannot worry too much about this. Right. So we do, okay, so we do lead out, um, and we lead out for like half pot, it looks like. I mean... If we are going to lead, I think we might as well just jam. Like, like you, like you said, we're, we basically have less than a pot size bet left, anyways. I almost feel like this looks stronger than just going all in. But uh, I think the play is probably to check again for all the reasons that you just said. Um, yes, because uh, just betting and leaving ourselves one thousand behind, what does it say to other players? Like, oh, this is I have sevens, but maybe I can win this pot. So. Uh, I want to bluff you and I still can fold. It, it doesn't make any sense no. because anyone moves in and we have, we will have five and a half to one to call. So I think even with, with like, I don't know, if for some reason we would be in this hand with something like ace jack of spades that would be super easy call with those odds and um, I don't know. And other hands. This is showing. This is simply showing the strength of our hand. And as I said before, if someone behind so has something strong, he will still play. Don't worry. Don't try to. Um, don't don't be scared of scaring off the opponents. They they will come if they have strong hands anyway. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then I mean, like once player two goes all in, I mean this it, this whole hand. I assume we're gonna lose the ace king here, king queen. I'm just gonna play it out. 
Yeah, we lose the ace king. Like the the whole hand just comes down to the preflop mistake. This is why we don't want to call preflop. Uh, we basically just avoid this situation um, because I mean, when the hand plays out this way, there's pretty much no hands that we're going to be up against that we're actually ahead of. I mean, unless he got very yeah, optimistic with and, and, and let's and sorry, sorry. Uh, but how about this? That this flop would normally would be absolutely extremely lucky for us if we because uh, against the other players against the hands that other players have should have the ranges they have in this they should have in this spot so ace king we can say oh that was unlucky but not really that was actually this flop in the long term would be extremely lucky for us because we would be we would hit king here uh, trip kings when the other players would start with ace queen ace jack suited aces uh well not kings but uh queens so that would be this would be this flop even though it was extremely lucky for us we still lost a lot of pots yeah the, the, yeah and the, the pre-flop play basically sets this hand up i mean it still is a little bit unlucky i mean there, it's obviously going to work out pretty well for us sometimes when we uh hit this flop and then everybody checks back the turn and then we can lead the river for value and probably get called by jacks or queens like there are going to be some situations where or even aces i guess uh, where it does work out but the way this hand played out i mean it's pretty hard to get the money in against the worst hand unless player two is just a complete spazzy player anyways i i don't I, I we, should, to, we should move on I this hand took this hand took far okay longer than I, I just want to say one more thing okay and i think it will be pretty mean but i think it's actually good it came out this way because we i think uh when playing hand like this it's now easier for us to understand that we have absolutely no reason to be in this in this hand preflop after how it was played on the first three positions yeah no it's totally good to at least uh at least learn from from mistakes if it doesn't work out the way you want it to um because even if it did work out the way you wanted it to this hand uh you know you might end up in this situation down the road and you still might not be really sure where you made your mistakes so let's but move also, on I one more thing, sorry. This is going to take us four hours. All right, it's going to be two hours but, stream, one hand per hour. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, just one more thing. I, I want to say directly to Karin Claudio. Uh, it may sound like I'm getting a little bit rough on you because of this hand, but it's definitely not like that. Uh, I, you know, everyone has to start at some point, so and everyone has to learn at some point. So we all did the same mistakes in the beginning, and I just want to make sure that you uh, you, you will understand why I think and on um, Frosty thinks, and maybe some other uh, regular players would would also think that this uh, it was a mistake from from the start. And I, it doesn't mean that uh, you know I have something against you personally. I just uh, just uh, tough love. I think it, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's say. That's what we need. Yeah, let's call it this way. <laughs> Do All we right. have any? Let's move on to the next hand. It was posted by uh, Dan Witt, and it's at a two uh, two no limit six max table. Um, wait, wait, wait. You nice to have Greg done? with us today uh, because he is a six max player. Uh, I do play a bit of six max myself, but mostly full ring. So it'd be nice to get a perspective for you guys who who play a lot of shorthanded games and don't uh, don't get to post a lot of six max uh, hands at my channel. So. Uh, again, I'll let Greg take this one. I'll let him start it off, and uh, and hopefully it doesn't take an hour. Yeah, <laughs> let's hope so. Uh, first of all, David is from my stream. Um, he is Polish and regular at my at my streams. So welcome, welcome, David. David also on we we take Canadian market by storm as well. We simply make it Polish stream. Uh, on on uh, Frosty's cha uh, channel, and of course uh, that's how we roll. Uh, okay, let's it's get back to the takeover. hand. I love it. Polish takeover, yes. Uh, we with nine nine seven offsuit uh, on the big blind. The hand will, will probably fold most of the time, but we have a limper under the gun. Everyone else folded, so we we see the flop for free. Uh, do we have? Uh, I just want to see in the chat if we have any no 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 additional info. Yeah, it's a good point. If you guys if you guys post hands and uh, you aren't using <laughs> poker hand replays, if you do use poker hand replays, uh, you can just leave notes in the title. 
uh, if you have any notes on the players. Uh, but if you're posting boom hand, boom link hands, I mean, it definitely definitely helps to just post your reads or, or maybe uh, statistics on the players underneath your link. Um, because it obviously changes the way that the hands are going to be played pretty drastically. But uh, if, if there's no reads or anything, we'll obviously just assume that everyone's unknown and go from there. Yeah, so we flop the second pair on pretty dry uh, flop. Player linked under the gun, which I would assume mm, that he's more on recreational side. Uh, well, especially on no limit too. Uh, I remember that for some time at higher stakes, and by higher I mean my stakes, which are not so much higher than no limit too, but uh, I'm not talking about really, really high stakes, but let's say no limit 100 and 200. Uh, for some time, I was uh, I've I've seen I've seen some players that are trying to employ the limp under the gun strategy. Uh, they were simply limping under the gun and then try to either call or maybe re-raise after someone else was involved in the pot. But I think it was for maybe one or two months, and I think this play is really difficult to make work. Um, but maybe this is too advanced. So, about uh, I don't see it lately. Uh, most of the time I see it, I see it from recreational players. So uh, that would be one thing I would assume, even before we see the flop. When someone limps under the gun, I would assume he is not necessarily the best player around in, let's say, in his five block radius from his house. Oh, actually, from, <laughs> okay, maybe I, I stopped talking too much. Okay, but. Uh, we, no, it's true check. though. This is where it's really nice if you have uh, the limp re-raise statistic in your. I don't have it in my HUD, but I have it in a pop-up. If you can, if you're able to see how often somebody's limp raising, uh, then you're going to be able to know if they're trapping or not. I mean, if somebody limp re limp re-raises pre-flop pretty often, then they're probably limping in pre the premium hands. But if they're if they're not limp raising very much and they're limping a lot, then like Greg thought, I mean, I think it's probably safe to assume that they're probably just a weaker player and are just limping a really wide range. So we don't know what the case is here, which is why like reads or, or stats are helpful if you guys are posting the links, but we'll just assume they're unknown. We'll just assume it's two no limit, so they're probably just a weaker player, uh, and, we'll, and we'll go from there. So we checked to the limper, and he bets two cents. Uh, you just check calling this, Greg, or any, any merit to check raising? I, I mean, obviously, we're not full. Yeah, I do. Um, for me, this is 100% check call. Uh, we don't uh, we don't gain anything from check raising here because I remember also another story. I remember a few few maybe more than a few years ago, players used to uh, do raises or check raises. They called it for information. Well, they called it. I did the same. That was the strategy at the time. Uh, so basically, the idea was like let's say in this uh, in this spot, would we would check raise with nine seven because we want to know if our opponent has something like maybe ace queen or king jack, and if not, then we then we have we can proceed to to like check fold the, on the term. But uh, nowadays, when players are playing much much more hands and they like to continue bet on more boards, uh, we just know that. For example, if he has exactly king queen here, we we still a huge favorite here to win the hand, uh, and we don't want to lose him too early. So we just uh, we just check call. This is like the general idea, but also uh, we never make any hand stronger than ours to fold. If he has eights, nines, any ten, of course, any over pair, uh, any a seven, king seven, any better better seven, we never make him fold. So there is absolutely no reason to put more money in the pot, especially out of position. And that's why we uh, we stick around and see what happens on turn. So that's what we do, I, I assume, yes. Check call. Yeah, he's, we check call. He's, yeah, of course, he's watching my streams, so he's, he's playing well. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, okay, I agree now. with all that logic. The, a check raise would just be for protection, basically, at this point. And like you said, he's not going to fold any better hands. So I think we just small ball it, let him keep bluffing maybe. Uh, there are some good turn cards that we can call again on, of course. And this is probably one of them. So we check yes, call. Yes, this is one of them. Because we have uh, we have now open-ended straight row with our pair. Um, so the plan is to check call, but let's see what happens. Uh, we decide to lead. And did I say David watch my streams or I said 
<laughs> this is this is not bad play in any terms, but I would I don't think we really gain anything again because let's say our op opponent has something like maybe I don't know ace four suited in in clubs, so he would uh, we we don't make him fold, but we also give him perfect uh, perfect price for us to uh, for him to call again. Uh, at this price, I think it's 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 good for him to even call with something like Queen Jack off, um, and uh, so we we again we do doesn't really get anything from that bet uh, except that we make all the wars hand fold. For example, he has like six, uh, seven six suited. Now what he thinks that does he continue? He may continue because the pot is still small and he's probably not so good. But you know, like uh, like I said, there maybe some players at this position they free barrel ace king off because they think they have like such a nice hand. So let him do it and let not make him to worry about that he may be his hand is beat. And again, we're not making any 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 better hand to to fold at this point. Yeah, I think that's the main thing. We're just not making better hands fold, then we're just probably folding out his bluffs. Um, so yeah, for that reason, yeah, I would because try, let's say I would check call again, and uh, yeah, exactly. Let's say let's say he has he is bluff happy and he has something like ace three. Just let him do it. His his outs at the moment are only three aces. That's at the turn. That's uh, that's what that's six percent. So let him do it because otherwise he we we have no chance of winning any money from him. Now, of course, this is. Uh, it's not all of his range that he will be just bluffing here blindly with ace-3 ace, ace off, but uh, it will happen, especially at those stakes. So let, let, uh, there, will be more, uh, there will be better spots to you know, uh, bet for protection uh, for, uh, in dif different, uh, different spots than, than this. So I would, I would just prefer a checker. Also, what, we, what we're going to do if we bet 4 here and we get raised to like 15, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna fold? Maybe he just 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 have a like flash draw or, or straight draw or maybe some random bluff, and we will never know because we 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 absolutely we don't really cannot call this out of position. Well, we shouldn't call at least. Well, let's see what happens. Maybe. Yeah, and uh, I think on with this hand too, like I'll speed it up a little bit here. So he does call with this hand too. I was gonna say like uh, he's likely gonna if he's bluffing, he's probably gonna keep bluffing on cards that. Uh, make us a straight because it'll look kind of scary and at 2 and L people might just keep value betting over pairs if we make a straight anyway so yeah I agree turns a turn should just be a check call uh, given that we led though and then we make a straight on the river I think it's a really easy bet we definitely don't want uh, we just definitely don't want to give him a chance to check back right and so and we, we get over bet but I, I I'm not uh, I don't think is it will be always a bet I mean, following the, the lead on the turn, yes, I, I agree, it should be most, most of the time should be bad. But I would also sometime here would try to encourage our, our, our opponent to like let, make, uh, check and let's say play scared that, okay, maybe we did that with King 10 or something. We called the flop because it was safe, that the turn was scary card for us. Uh, not scary, but uh, you know the board was getting more ugly for us, so we we just bet for protection. And now the jack on the ten comes, which is terrible card for our king ten. So how about I check and let you bluff me, and then I can you know call or check raise or something. But uh, so that will be sometimes that will be my understanding. But I guess yeah, that's what we have to do because he can still check ten behind us uh, on this board as well. Maybe that was too advanced, what I said. Maybe too complicated, or complicated. But I just wanted to um, no, it's fine. To point out like, what kind of thinking may may sometimes happen. Yeah, no, I agree. There's some merit, but I, I do think once we lead the turn and he calls, uh, his range is probably weighted towards more showdown value hands than bluffs. So if we check the river, I mean, he, I think he is just going to check back a lot. Like maybe he turns something into a bluff, but I don't think you see that very often at these stakes. Uh, so I, I personally like the lead after we led the turn. I agree that I would have just check called the the turn and probably checked this river. Um, but the, yeah, given that we do lead out, I actually don't love the over bet. I think it's okay because the pot's pretty small anyways. But I would probably just bet like three quarters pot um, 
because we're not i don't really think this is a spot that we want to polarize ourselves that much um there are better straights out there and there are obviously full houses out there so i wouldn't mind like an over bet if we had a full house um i'd actually really like an over bet if we had a full house because i don't think a straight's ever going to fold or if we had like the nut straight i think an over bet's better um but yeah, yeah because what what we what we do here if we're gonna get check uh, raised to like 50 are we super happy with our nine here it's uh because if we bet like 10 and get raised to 25 uh, and i think it would be much easier to call than uh if we build pot ourselves out of position and now now get raised i'm not saying we should instant fold when we get raised like this but what what do we beat we just hope for split actually because uh we just need to hope that someone else has nine as well uh there is no what, what is it? there is no worse uh straight so no one else is raising except for the same straight higher straight or full houses so we we lose in most of the cases and just split with another nine uh if we get raised here so that would be and also we take away we definitely take away all the bluffs uh let's say he he called us with something like king queen of of clubs, and now what? What he's supposed to do? Facing over bet on the river. He, he would have to be like extremely bluff happy to to make some move on, on our. Uh, he would pr probably do it more uh, more likely to do it when we don't bet, we don't over bet on the river to make some bluff raise uh, yeah. than against uh, against the over bet on the river. Yep, I agree. <laughs> And look at that, he shoves. I think we have a really, really easy fold at this point. I yeah, call. and the, the worst don't call. No, we called. But I don't think we I, did? I haven't seen the results yet. But I don't think. I mean, I, I don't. I'm, I'm still at uh, at waiting what to do. But what I wanted to say is, uh, the worst thing is that by just check calling flop and then leading small amount on the turn, we gain no information we have we have no idea what kind of hand may uh, our opponent have so let's say he had uh, i don't know pocket sevens does it work yeah that that's how he would play it pocket eights the same uh any 10 uh well now i think any 10 would not play that but you know jack 10 10 8 and 7 of course so uh yeah i think we this should be like very small check call check call check call pot and I think we would make more money, definitely make more make money playing like this. And now, well, I hope you fold it. Yeah, and the river. I mean, we're we're calling it. We're chopping at best, I would think here, unless player four is just crazy. Uh, so I, I definitely wouldn't call this river. But let's uh, let's see what player four shows up. Yeah, I see now, and it makes perfect and, sense. Yeah, and no surprise. Right, he yeah. has a full house. Um, so it's just like one of those spots where we just have to like realize our relative hand strength i think like even though our you know like our absolute hand strength is that we have a straight which is obviously a pretty powerful hand like relative to our opponent here just given the action and, and the bet sizing a straight isn't very good when there's you know better straights out there and a whole bunch of full houses so uh, you just don't see these massive over bet all ins uh, as being bluffs very often either so i think we have a very easy river fold um so yeah i think i think i would have would have played this hand almost completely different i don't think it's like a terrible line or anything to, to bet the turn and bet the river but uh i think it's a pretty easy river fold when he when he goes all in so also uh, i really like i really like the just call just flat uh from our opponent on the on the turn he didn't panic uh he had position so he he took some risk against some draws but yeah it paid off in full for him yeah i think Maybe aside from the limp pre-flop, I think player four played their hand uh, pretty well. Yeah, um, so anyways, chalk that, up that up to, uh, chalk that up as one being right for, for Greg and I. Uh, I guess we were right about the first hand too. I guess we're two for two, Greg. That's a pretty good start. Well, the first one, yeah. We, we, we both agreed on fold pre-flop. We don't have any memes, right? Uh, uh, I don't think we have any memes yet. I think a lot of people might have missed, uh, missed that when we were talking about it. You want to say it one more time? Yeah, all right, I'll say it one more time. All right, we're doing a contest out there for, for everybody watching right now. Uh, the person who can come up with the, the best meme or even just a Photoshop picture of Greg and I uh, is going to win 10 bucks on PokerStars. And this all came about because 
Uh, there's been this really annoying meme out there of Greg and I, as you can see right there, uh, where Greg's got all the money, <laughs> and I'm just it's really annoying. Off. Greg's just it's cool. winning tournaments and winning Twitch, and I'm just losing money everywhere. So I want somebody to make a meme of maybe Frosty with all the money, or maybe Frosty swimming in some gold, and Greg oh. as my pool boy, or something, something we along <laughs> those lines. <laughs> And, and we'll ship the best, uh, the best meme ten bucks at the end of the stream if we get any uh, any takers. So that that's just going on the side. Okay, I think it's best actually start fine to stay to stick to those those to this team when I'm when I have all the money. It's fine too. <laughs> You're not getting my <laughs> money if somebody wins with another meme like this. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um, all right, so we got four hands by McBill eighty seven. Uh, let's just choose one and then we'll move down to different people and then we can come back to, uh, okay. So which one, which one are we doing now? Uh, let's just pick the first one. Make it easy. He even said, in the chat, I think he said right? his hands, he says, yo frosty, uh, with my hands, not much analysis needed. So, um, instead of taking an hour, maybe we'll just spend 55 minutes on this one. Go from there. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, how about you start, huh? All right. So another six max hand. We're playing five no limits. Wait. Then I have a, then I have wrong hand. Um, uh, I've got the one with seven four seven four in the big blind. I thought it was the first one what, you posted. Magbill Magbill eighty seven. Yeah. When I when I click the first hand is is uh, big to two twenty. So maybe he took the second one or something. Yeah, let me check again. Oh yeah, you're right. Which one did I click? Let's do the let's do the cash game hand. Maybe it was the second okay, one. Okay, so maybe the second uh, one. Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, sorry, it's the a second six one. Marks, five marks to be at the moment with one player missing seven or four suited yeah. on the big blind, right? That's okay, one. go ahead. All right, so we're in the big blind. Let's see what happens. Folding around to the button, who min raises, and the small blind calls, and we choose to three bet. Um, we don't have to three bet this hand. Like, there's a lot of suited connectors we can three bet, right? I mean, if we're three betting this hand, probably means we're just three betting like every connector. But I think it's fine, like in a vacuum. Like uh, I think calling would be fine too. They, they did just min raise the button, but I think three betting might be actually better than calling. So I'm okay with that. And well, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I first of all I don't like the stack sizes of uh, our uh, other players. They both have less than hundred big blinds. The first player has something like what seventy eight or nine. Yeah. Um, so that that would be also against uh, because when we free bet, we, when we squeeze, we hands like seven for suited. We would prefer actually, I think, to be a little bit deeper to have some room to do something because we usually will end up on you know more bluffy side here. Um, but I would prefer free bet here against only the button open. I think that would be that would make more sense than to squeeze against two players. But um, also, I would have advice for most, most of our uh, smaller stakes players to just don't go crazy with hands like this, <laughs> especially in micro stakes. In micro stakes, the players didn't come to play and to fold. So they really want to, to see their flops, they want to play, they want to hit their hands. So I would I would stick more I would more stick to I would stick more to playing very very simple poker and would perfectly be fine here with squeezing with you know ace king ace queen pair of tens something like that and seven four suited you know it uh, seems like for me too adventurous to to do and only on the con well I would say it would be okay if you excellent post flop player. And with all the respect to McBeal, and I don't really want to make enemies among um, <laughs> our viewers. What are you going to say? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, I would say that, you know, my assumption is that at the moment you're still not, uh, you know, the perfect flop player. And really, that's, I, well, I'm, I mean, okay, I'm sorry, that, that maybe that was too rough. But no, it's fine, I mean, nobody's the perfect you know, poker I'm, player. Yeah, and, I mean, post-flop player, and, I, you know, I would feel very uncomfortable uncomfortable to, to squeeze this hand, 7 for suited, and then, you know, like, try to push other, other players uh, from their hands, like you know, it's it's not easy. It's very easy. I mean, it's it's very hard. So why do it? Why do it with seven and four yeah, out I of think, position? I think he nailed it with the with the stack sizes. I think like we can probably just uh, get the read that they're probably both recreational players, and recreational players are not going to fold to the three bet very often, like you said. And most of the value from three betting a hand like seven four is going to come from fold equity. And if we don't have it. I mean, I think we're getting a good enough price to call. Otherwise, it's probably just going to be a fold. So I think that's a good point. If you guys, even if you don't have stats on players, even if you really don't have any reads, uh, there are things that you can just use to quickly make assumptions. And like stack size is definitely going to be one of them. So if they aren't using auto top off, if they're sitting with a weird amount like this, uh, they're probably just playing for fun. And they're probably not going to fold to too many three bets. So we're going to put ourselves. Yeah, in that's some bad that's spots. why they play for fun. Yeah, playing playing for fun means we want to see flops. So you 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 will not you have almost no fold equity here, mm -hmm. and that's why. Um, and and so most of the time you will wake up here with seven four on the flop in freeway flop. Uh, you know seven high. So out of position. So this is not the spot that will make you money in the long run. <clears throat> yeah. So. As played, we pretty much get uh, a dream flop. Uh, they both call, and it's 10, 8, 6, uh, two hearts. Um, I mean, I don't think we can go too wrong here uh, just by betting out or check raising. I think are both pretty fine. Um, I would probably just bet out, but I think check raising is actually pretty decent. The problem with check raising, though, is like like we've kind of been talking about, Like, I don't think we're going to make anybody make any big folds here. So I'm not really sure if we even have the fold equity that is nice uh, about check raising. Although it is kind of nice to just get the money in on the flop when we have so much equity against anything. Uh, it's never going to be a very big mistake. But I think we could probably just bet and just jam the turn anyways. Uh, I don't know. Any thoughts on check raising or betting out here, Greg? Um, well, in moments like this, I would I would like to ask myself what would I do here with you know pocket tens or what would I do here with pocket aces. And I think in both cases, I would I would make a bet here after the squeeze. I want to, you know, and also sometimes it would be something like, well, I don't know, maybe something even like a seven suited, but no hearts. Uh, so we, we want to protect uh, or maybe not protect, but we want to balance the, 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 the cards, the hands we are betting here with. And as Frosty said, I would have nothing against check raising here. But then it it doesn't really plays well for us, I think, because what if let's say if we if the player one check, then we bet and then we check again and player player five he bets. Okay, player one falls, we check raise, and what does it mean? If he if we check raise and his stack already will be I don't know, it's very unlikely that the hand will. And uh, he either falls or we go all in. So if he falls, that means that he doesn't really have anything anyway. And if he goes all in, that means we, I don't know, we probably here should be around coin flip against like most of his hands, I guess. Or a little bit behind if he has some something as strong as set, or maybe higher flash draw. So we we're not in perfect shape if we're going all in. And as we said before, with King Jack hand, if we go, I mean, if he has strong hand enough, then uh, then he he will stick stick around. So I don't think we by check crazy we making like we gain a lot uh, here. Yeah. Well, uh, except for thought maybe, of, yeah. Yeah. One more thing I thought of too is just like like you said, if we if we check raise, I I really don't expect somebody to stab on this flop to fold very often. So we're still getting it in as a coin flip, which is fine, I think. But if they have overcards here, like king jack, king queen, um, they probably won't bet those hands. So we're pretty much just giving free cards, I think. And we still we have a huge draw, obviously, but we still only have seven high. So I think betting is better now that I think about it, especially because we at least make those hands fold probably, and we take it down with seven high. 
Now when you said that, and after what I say, I think actually check raising makes sense. <laughs> I'm sorry about it. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, no, people, well, they, well, people don't usually stab on these flops with like a hand like King Jack. Yes, but uh, you know, you never know. He, 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 the pot is pretty big. He got checked around and maybe he wants to take us. No, but what, what I mean is not because that I expect him to bluff on this flop. I mean, uh, let's say he has something like Ace-10 and he, he's okay with going with it. So if we check race and then we can, with this kind of draw, when we have, what is it? Uh, we have double belly, right? With five and nine and we, yeah. we like all the hearts. So we have 15 outs. So we should be still good, like let's say a queen of spades hits uh, the 10. And we can, after check race, the pot will be already so big that we can put, uh, put the other player all in. And if we only bet here for, let's say, I don't know, 60, and get one call, then would be 280, and the player would be still more than pot, um, and he has position, and we didn't see show any strength. So I'm not sure. I think it's uh, this is why we don't play 74 suited <laughs> out of position because this this is really nice flop for us, and we still. Uh, I'm still not sure which way it would I, I be. I think if anything, better. that's just more merit to betting, though. Like if we bet and get called by 10x, and then a queen or a king comes, and we can shove for pot. Uh, you know, somebody might make a might make a fold if they have a ten or if they have a hand like um, Ace Eight or something like that. Like we can almost pick up more fold equity by betting turn on overcards than we could by check raising flop. I mean, I think there's merits to both, but I, I think betting. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. It, I don't think it's it's that or that that big difference anyway. Let, let's so, just see what happens here. Yeah. So let's stop talking again. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter because player one. Makes it yeah, so this we can we can dis disregard this. It, it's almost like check, so we we shouldn't worry too much about this. We should whatever we wanted to do, we still do the same thing, and just forget about this mean bet. Uh, I think actually the worst thing would be here just to call this, and and let him draw to whatever he wants to draw. And also, I don't see player five folding here anything after we just call. He he calls he he can make profit here by calling with you know like ace jack. So um, I would still proceed whatever we wanted to do, and we decided we don't know what we wanted to do. If we want to bet or or check it, but actually I think it makes uh, more sense now to raise because player five, if he's recreational, he may think, hmm, not only his uh, the other one bets, but the other guy is raising him. That means they both have, must have really strong hands. When mm -hmm. in fact the the this don't bet or lead bet doesn't really matter to us so I, now I would definitely make a race to something like you know like like 60 yeah I, I agree for sure also if we if we just call player 5 might also think that there's been a bet and a call he's probably way less likely to like stab with the king jack offsuit hand whereas if it got checked to him he might go for it so I agree let's see if we race we race but we race smaller than I was expected and yeah. also, this is one one thing I want to say as well because uh, this is the trick I sometimes do against weaker players when I'm not sure about my hand or I have like big draw but no position and it's on the ten something something like this. I like to bet smaller than I would normally bet because most of the recreation players they don't really pay attention to s sizes of of bets or raises. So let's say we on the 10 with $2 in the pot and I bet 10 cents just like that. And most of the time he would raise just to 20 because he has no really, you know, don't really know much about strategy, about correct bet, bet sizing. And thus I have still very nice price to call. And, and that exactly. Uh, so here after this 5 cent bet, I would stick to my regular size bet that I was planning to do before. So I would, and my bet would be 60, so I would still raise to 60 and doesn't matter that he bets 5. So I would stick like to consider my bet size on the side uh, because of the size of the, of, of the pot and not because of the size of his bet. Yeah, I, I like going bigger here, like at least 75% pot so we can jam the turn. It might be like, it'll be a little bit of an overbet on the turn, but it won't be much. There'll be like 250 in the pot. Both players will have less than three bucks or three bucks behind. I think if we make this like seventy-five or eighty cents, uh, we can just jam the turn pretty much any turn, uh, and it's going to be pretty good. Um, because yeah, I mean, when we make it only forty cents, if we get called, we can just do another standard bet, I guess, on the turn. It's not that big a deal. 
but I think we might maximize our fold equity um, by just betting bigger on the flop and then and then betting and then all in on the turn. So yeah, and player five, player calls. five calls and player one folds, and there is <laughs> exactly the hand we are talking about, the yeah, cards we are talking about. Black so yeah, team, I, yeah, I would just jam here if we bet bigger uh, on the flop. I, I would just jam for sure. Um, yeah, but yeah. now the player five has twice of, uh, twice as many chips as in in the pot. So yeah, yeah we can't. Yeah, jam now. okay, just continue. Yeah, that's too much. So what would you do? I would bet like uh, you know like seventy five now. I would actually bet less than half of the pot now, uh, because if we bet bigger, like well, let's say you know one one point five, then we we pot committed. Mm -hmm. And we still have seven five seven high um, out of position and just one 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 card to go. Um, so I don't know. But I actually, you know what I like? I would I would actually do what I said before. I would make something like you know twenty five cent bet now. Yeah, I mean, I actually don't mind that. I don't know. I I don't know if I would go twenty. The thing about the queen is like. It is an overcard, so it is potentially a scare card where we might pick up fold equity, but he's still not going to fold pretty much. I don't think there's like any hands he's really going to fold, even though the queen could be a scare card uh, that he called on the flop with. Um, because if he has a hand yes, like but six, I, I, seven, by eight, betting, seven, eight, nine. But, yeah, by by betting twenty five, I don't want. I I I don't look to fold him. I just want to you know stay in the hand, and you know by by maintaining my equity. And you know we we're not winning. Uh, I don't really look for winning this hand as a bluff here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't expect him to fold some, even something like Jack Ten. But it, it, when we bet small and he agrees to play our game uh, that we put on him, then then we have very simple decision on the on the river. We either hit, and we probably have enough. Almost, oh, we can, it doesn't matter. We don't need to put him on him. We can just make a half half put bet. And or we don't, and we when we give up because we we're not gonna make him to fault anything else. So this is this is uh, the small bet here is not uh, the purpose of this bet would not be to you know make him fault you know his straight or two pair or strong pair anything like that. It's just to be staying the hand at our price. And also one thing I want to say that this hand against player like this and the hand as it plays. Now I'm looking for like different solutions. This is not, you know, my standard play. I I want to adapt. I want to adjust to whatever happened in this hand, and as it is played, and also probably to the stakes. So that's why this 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 is not my standard line. What I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to think of something uh, that is that will make sense against this particular opponent and this particular board and our hand. Yeah, out of position we're basically trying well. to do a fishy blocker bet because we don't think our opponent's going to exploit us for it. Um, I, I don't know, though. I still kind of like going half pot at least. The thing is, I mean, like, I want to be able to maximize value if we actually hit our hand on the river. If we bet 25 cents, we might not stack him on the river. Um, although, I guess we're probably a favorite to miss our, our hand at this point anyway, so that might not be the main concern. But, you know, there, there could be some hands he might fold to a slightly bigger bet that he'll just never fold to 25 cents. So what if he has ace-8? What if he has ace-6? What if he has pocket fives? Like, I feel like there are some hands that we could just not be thinking about that might fold. I don't think it's very likely, but I, I think, think I go 75 cents or, or 80 okay. cents and then just, you know, maybe we pick up some more fold equity and then we can jam the river if we hit a heart or a five or even a nine is kind of dicey now because a jack would make a bigger straight. But yeah, let's let's see what happens. I think we've talked enough about this spot. So yeah, he bets seventy two cents, which is more along the lines of what I probably would have done. So just hope we don't get jammed on, and we do get called. Yeah, and what we pace. what do what would do, what do we do when we? Oh, I think we have to call. I think we just have to. Call. We have to call. I mean, be, you just... okay. It's two fifty. Will be it will be uh, what five seventy. And we would have to call two and a half. So we got better than two and a half to one, right? Let's uh, at let's this see how much equity we would have here. And we we must assume that nine would work for us as well at this point, uh, unless he has jack nine or something. But it, it doesn't really matter. We cannot assume he has exactly jack nine here. That would well, be very we, small. Yeah, let's see. Let's just let's just give him a range of if he's shoved here. My mouse is kind of sticking here. 
Uh, let's give them... Let's give them the nuts. Let's give them sets. But let's just try to make it like a worst case scenario, right? Maybe he has like queen 10. All the two pairs, all the sets, all the straights. And I would also go with something like, you know, like king queen of hearts. So like the, yeah. the top pair and draw combo. Yeah, okay. I don't think our equity would be really good here. Yeah, whatever. But well, I think let's we just give him like ace queen. Um, but ace queen of hearts or just ace queen? Uh, ace queen I just did ace queen. Okay, queen. okay. I don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I couldn't figure <laughs> out the suit selection. Uh, <laughs> ten of diamonds. Queen of clubs. Okay. What do you use? So, so how much equity do we need to make the call? Did you figure that uh, out? It, it, it will be. Uh, what, what did I say? It would be more than, it would be like two and a half to one, I think, if I remember correctly. It will be, the pot will be 575, and we will need to pay another two and a half. So, yeah, it's like 2.3 to one or something. If he jammed the turn, the pot would be bigger than that, wouldn't it? Yeah, he started the pot no. with like four bucks. Yeah, but now he has 321 and the pot is 254. So if he jumps now, it would be 575. And we need to put another two and a half. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what do you use? So he would be jamming. Well, let me see. We'd have to call another, yeah, 250, but we'd be winning 820. So 250 into 820. So we would need 30% equity to make this call break even. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I, I see where I made mistake. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, okay, so we need 30, if we have 30% equity against this range, we would be calling. Uh, we actually only have 24, so, I mean, the thing about this range is it's super, super tight though. Um, you know, if you if you widen okay, it. Okay, yeah, so he can he can do it a little bit looser, but also this, this shows why uh, why we should uh, make the bigger race on the on the flop? It just just make more sense because we have more folding equity from some you know like random you know like uh, maybe queen ten would not call I don't know maybe it would still but uh, but maybe okay it doesn't matter but I think now we we put ourselves in 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 difficult spot because this at the moment the stacks are pretty awkward for us yeah so we we could make it play better if we make a bigger race on the on the flop. I agree. Okay. So, uh, now, anyways, now we can disregard this. We bailed out on the just river get, here. Um, nail oh, we straight. just got called. Yeah, that's like, that's the best say. card. This is the best, absolutely the best card we could hit. Yeah. Uh, well, five of hearts would be nice as well, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is. <laughs> I would, would uh, not I think, be bad I as think well. we make a, a bit of a mistake here by only betting 145 in the river. I think I would just put put them all in at 250. Like I think he's going to probably either call this river bet or fold it, regardless of our sizing. And I think we just lose a dollar of value when we uh, just make it 145 because I don't think we're ever getting raised. So I think you know the flush draws miss. I think if we go all in here, he's going to probably look us up with a pair. Uh, he's not going to call if he has a draw himself, obviously, anyways. So I, I would definitely just put them all in here. Uh, I think we lose value by, by choosing a smaller size in. Uh, so he does call. Yeah, we, we let him go with some, some probably every hand. He has, a, what is he at, like 250 and the pot is 320. So I, I just like Frosty said, I think he's either calling or folding. It doesn't matter what we do. Yeah, I, I wanted to see what he had there. It uh, didn't show me. I'm going to replay it again. No, it didn't show it as well. Uh, I don't know why. He should fold, show his hand, right? Yeah, it should at least uh, show it in the chat box. So let's see if it shows it this time. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't show. It says Mook's hands. Mook's really? hands. Yeah, so... Well, maybe uh, uh, maybe Dan Witt uh, could let us know what he had. It wasn't done, but it was McBill87. Oh, yeah, yeah, my bad. McBill, uh, maybe let us know what he had. Yeah, if he knows what he has, then let us know. Uh, well, he definitely didn't have, uh, you know, Jack really 9. It doesn't really matter or... too much. I mean, it doesn't really matter if he had a 10. or. My bet would be, bad. yeah, like, so. I think, I don't know, like, pocket jacks would make sense as well. But, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, as you said. Yeah. 
Um, I'm anyways, really, we, we I'm gotta, oh yeah. Oh, okay, we have yeah. a we have a photo. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. He mocks sevens, by the way. Um, oh really? Yeah. So he was <laughs> he was he was calling us down really late, um, obviously. But that, that's what we expect, right? Especially at these stakes. Like, there's no way sevens is ever gonna fold that flop. There's no way sevens is gonna fold that turn, even though it probably should. Uh, but at these stakes, it's just oh, not definitely going to should fall. And um, then on the river, I mean, like I said, flush draws miss. So if flush draws miss, uh, and and you can always have ace king. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't expect that hand to fold very much with the with the pawn odds as well. So I think we lost a bit of value, and I would have done a few things differently. But definitely an interesting yeah, hand. Definitely an interesting hand. Also, let's uh, let's notice that we again, like with the king jack hand, we had we were extremely lucky. Uh, because we beat sevens with seven and four, so you know this is something that you, you need to have in mind as well. That <laughs> when right, you, this, when you, this picture, this picture, yeah, is this awesome. picture is really. <laughs> uh, this may be a winner. Uh, yeah, so this was uh, this was from this was from Dan Witt. That's why I was confused. Uh, yeah, I really <laughs> you you can put it on the screen. Yeah, uh, I, I want to make it bigger, even though it's not gonna. I be yeah, because I really like also not only. What, why, why am I dressed in World black? World Series I'm the of good, Poker I, War. I'm the good guy here. I like so. it. No, I'm the good guy. I like it. I like my boots. Look at those boots. <laughs> I, I, I like your haircut, though. I'm comparing to mine <laughs> as well. And also, like, uh, That's you know. That's why you're the bad you, guy. You don't have any hair, man. The bad guys always don't have the hair. This is yeah. great. I love this. Yeah, but also, look at this. Like, uh, for you, it's just like for fun. Oh, here I'm with, uh, with my lightsaber. And let's have just some fun. And for me, it's like, oh, yeah, it's another day at the office. I need to kill That's another good guy. You know you're going to lose. You know you're going to lose the fight. Uh, we, we, we know what happens. Bring on the other GIF so you will see what happens. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Thanks for, that, uh, thanks for that, Dan. With, that was really funny. I know. It's, it's, I, we, I know we have just one, but this is, this is already way That's going to be tough to beat. Even if, that is going to be yeah, hard to beat. Yeah. So, one one thing we need to know definitely would be at the end of the of the stream would be the the poker size nickname or it, it can it can be sent to me um, by you know by by private message on Twitch as well. But we need to get the at some point we need to get the poker size nickname. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, why don't we get back to the hands? Let's uh, let's use is it Marcin three M who is up next? I think. He's from my stream as well. Ah, look at that. Wait, 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 where is it? Uh, so I can find, okay. It but was also, uh, yeah, I let you start and I, I take a short break for tea. You're going to break right? for, for tea? Yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to very quickly make a tea for myself. Okay. No worries. All right, well, okay, I'll, I'll be right back. I'll take this hand while, while uh, Greg's getting tea. Isn't it like one in the morning? Your time? Yes, like, exactly. Is that a standard tea time? It's always good, always good time for tea. <laughs> One in the morning? It's not, okay. it's not, not gonna, okay, okay. You convinced me I'm gonna take uh, coconut water. Is that fine with you? <laughs> Mom? That's fine. That, that's, that's fine. That makes more sense. Okay. I'll uh, get, get your tea. I know you want your tea. Go ahead and get your tea. <laughs> I'm gonna get coconut water. <laughs> Okay, well, Greg's getting his coconut water or tea or whatever he's getting. Uh, let's let's look, take a look at this hand. Um, player five, uh, we're playing six max, uh, another uh, one cent, two cent hand. Uh, player five opens to seven cents, and we got the jacks. Um, I think three betting here is obviously fine. I actually don't mind calling as well. Uh, I think it just depends on what kind of strategy you want, you want to have. Uh, if you th want to three bet against middle position, Obviously, go ahead and three bet jacks. I think there's merit to having a strategy where you don't even three bet against middle position or early position because ranges are generally pretty strong here, and like we don't really want to get four bet with jacks. Um, or same thing with queens uh, without any reads against uh, against some people. So just an un depends on what kind of strategy you want to have out of the blinds. Um, but three bet looks pretty standard. So player five calls, and on a five, six, seven uh, flop, um, at, at, especially at one cent, two cent here, I would just go ahead and bet. I think we can definitely get called by a lot of worse hands. Um, excuse me. Obviously, like pocket eights, nines, tens, uh, flush draws, 
Uh, ace king might even peel one here, or or ace queen of spades. Uh, I think there's enough. It, it's not like a super fist pump spot. Obviously, he can player five can have like queen sometimes. He can maybe have kings. Uh, he could have sets and two pairs sometimes, but especially at two and L, like people are just going to be calling preflop uh, much much wider than they should. I think uh, without reads, obviously. So I go ahead and just bet this. Yeah, it's to a standard size. I think that looks pretty good. And we do get called. Uh, pretty ugly turn card. Um, we should still be ahead of a lot of his calling range on the flop, I think. Um, but like I said, he probably can have some ace highs, especially with flush draws. Um, either way, though, I think we just have to check at this point. Uh, I, like, I don't think we need to really turn this hand into a bluff by betting. And I don't think we're ever going to get called by worse if we bet unless he calls with a flush draw, which is obviously just a small part of his range. So I think we just go ahead and check here. Uh, looks like we bet out half pot. And we get called. Yeah, I mean, for all those reasons, I, I like checking on the turn. And I think if we face a bet, I'm probably just going to check fold most of the time, to be honest. Like, like I just don't expect that player five is going to bet here with, like, pocket tens or, like... Maybe they would, I mean, maybe they would bet with like pocket eights or pocket nines. So we, we could maybe consider bluff catching. But I think for the most part at 2 and L, people are playing fairly straightforward. And I think I would probably just lean towards a check fold because I would expect it to go check, check pretty often. And then we could maybe go for a thin value bet on the river. Like this would be one where we could actually probably go for a thin value bet if it goes check, check on the turn. Uh, or, or we could just check it down and, and be happy about winning. Um, I can't imagine we would bluff this river though after, after we get called. And, I mean, at this point, we're in a really hard spot. We obviously beat flush draws, and we beat pocket eights and pocket nines that were turning themselves into a bluff. But I don't think that's going to be a large part of their range. I think pocket eights, pocket nines, pocket tens, uh, they're probably all just going to check back and take take showdown because they can win against missed flush draws. So I'm just folding this river. It kind of sucks, but I think it's just a really bad turn card for us here. Um so yeah, and we do fold. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, we definitely, if, if we're calling there and we're winning, we're going to be winning against flush draws. Uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. But for the most part, I mean, we're going to have better hands here than uh, Jax. Just trying to back it up a bit. Because if we are going to bet this turn, um, we're going to have ace-king ourselves a lot, right? I mean, like, obviously, if we three bet preflop, we're going to have ace-king in our range. Uh, we might t just bet the flop with, with ace-king um, occasionally. Uh, we might check sometimes too. But, you know, if we are going to bet the flop with ace-king sometimes, we're obviously going to hit on the turn. So then we're value betting. And then on the river, I think we can, we don't, or, or ace-queen or ace-jack or whatever, we don't need to bet this river because of all the draws that missed. So when we check this river, it, it's not like we never have an ace. Like, we're going to be checking an ace pretty often here. Uh, because we want a bluff catch from all the missed draws. So we, I, I don't feel obligated to call with jacks. Like, I think it's a pretty easy check fold. All right, you got your tea or, or, your, or your coconut water? Coconut water. I just wanted to do the recap of the hand. So I agree to, let's, let's let me see this again. Uh, Pre-flop, free bet, bet on the flop, I agree. I would check the 10. Because I know uh, representing ace is something that people do, and I agree with that. But I would do that with you know either when I have an ace or either when I would do something, you know, like ten nine of hearts. When we have jacks, we don't actually need to represent the ace. I mean, I know I understand that some for some people it would look like weak play, but we 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 are not folding an ace here. So what do we want to fold here? You know, if if our opponent has something like eight. Uh, then we make him fold, but if he, I don't see we folding anything, and I would prefer to check call on ace than to, you know, turn our jacks into bluff because we are not folding any ace. Yeah, I and pretty, we much, can, I pretty we, much said the exact same thing, Greg. I don't think we need to go over can, it again. Yeah, I, I think we're on the we same can. page. Um, okay, I should, there, I there was a good comment in the chat here drink from my uh, coconut water. Zomg, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just drink your coconut water. <laughs> 
Uh, Zome MG Bill says, have you ever played 2NL? Only the occasional whale calls wide. The rest are a bunch of nits. Uh, I think this is pretty true. I mean, I was just kind of assuming that player five was just a complete unknown. If, if player five is a regular, I think you're probably right. They're, pro they're probably definitely on the tighter side. And then if they're not a regular, they're probably on the other end of the extreme and they're probably calling way too wide. So yeah, definitely know your player types. Uh, Skrimitsu says no host alert. Uh, thanks for the host. If I missed you, thanks for all the host guys. Much appreciated. So okay, Greg's got his coconut water. Uh, let's go. But back I, I wanted to say that uh, in my challenge that I do on my channel, I, I play on no limit two, and and we we played already almost twenty thousand hands. So I think I got a little bit feel on how the hands are played here, and you know, it, it you just never know. It sometimes get called by some absolutely strange hand, hands, and sometimes you you know I I don't even know that players would fold their too much. As far as I see, they don't really want to fall. So uh, I, I don't really. Also, I'm a, I'm a proud neat. So if, if that was, a, you know, I don't think that calling player a neat is a, something that you should, you know, like treat like oh this player plays bad or something. Um, but for for most of the people, you know, calling someone a neat is like saying oh he's not so good. He plays too tight. But tight is right at the lower stakes, I think. Yeah, no, I've actually played quite a bit of 2 and L this year, too, for various challenges, and it's the variance at 2 no limit can be actually much higher than, like, 10 no limit, because you do get such a wide range of, of different players, like you said. I mean, a lot of the times you're going to be in spots where you kind of just have to close your eyes and call, because people show up with completely random stuff sometimes, and then, unfortunately, if you're up against a more uh, straightforward player, then, yeah, they might just have the nuts. Um, so there's definitely a wide range of player types. Uh... Somebody asked if you ever stream in English, Greg. No, I do it in uh, in Polish because I yeah. think there are so many great streamers like Frosty that speak that stream in English. That I leave it to them. <laughs> Except when we decide to take over Canadian market, then then <laughs> I will I'll Bill reconsider. Says, uh, I watched your challenge sometimes, but my Russian is not there. So uh, well, my Russian is not there as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he thinks you speak Russian, Greg. I would love to, but I'm really terrible at <laughs> Russian. So um, I I know maybe you know a few words. I can try some time, but uh, would be tough. Go watch Greg's challenge. Go watch his Russian stream. It's great. All right, I think the next I think the next <laughs> hand is uh, El Trickster. I think that's where we left off. Okay, wait, just wait, wait, wait. Let me scroll. Uh, El Trickster, okay. Yeah, Hi, up. Frosty and Dawor, this is my hand, right? We're moving up to the big leagues now, Greg. We're playing 25 no limit, it looks like. Oh, and Pot Timmy Tamaha. Wow. Oh, is it really? Yes. <laughs> Are we going to do it? Uh, how did I'm, I'm, El, El Trickster, know. I think you stumbled into the wrong party, my friend. I don't know if there's going to be <laughs> very much help here. Uh -huh. Let's just yeah, let's just roll through it and see what see what we. Uh, I played a little bit of Omaha. I mean, not very much. I did. Uh, I did. I did play exactly the same stakes, but I know you twenty five, but it was like eight or nine years ago. So I wonder if some of the things has changed. Yeah, let let's just roll through the hand and and give our best analysis. Uh, let, let's try not to take too long though. So we we just call with six six eight nine double suited. Uh, seems pretty standard, I think. Maybe some people three yes, bet this. Really I'm nice. not really sure. Uh, I would not three bet this in position. I think this hand is really nice when we have position and you know such a nice value from small connectors. Mm -hmm. So we smash the flop. It looks like uh, three ways three seven six. Uh, we have a middle set plus an open ended straight and. It is going to check to us, so I assume. We're yes, and no, as as well, no, no flash rolls, which is really good at the moment mm -hmm. for us. So we bet uh, player two calls, and there's a jack on the turn. Player two checks. I assume we're just betting again. Yep. And here's where it gets interesting. We get check raised. I assume the only play is to call at this point. I mean. We, we don't have the nuts. Uh, four or five is certainly out there. You, you would expect it to check raise the flop sometimes, but it doesn't have to. You want to no, I would, I would, yeah, I would, uh, exactly. On, the, on this dry board, I would expect four or five to call and wait, like, wait for something that, you know, something like 
uh, king of spades when you know the more flash draws appear and and more um, well actually one flash draw appear but now it would uh, he would assume that someone who's betting the flop would continue on the turn so it'd be perfect spot for check race as well but that said I think well I'm not you know expert on Omaha I would just call and uh, I would definitely not fold uh, uh, just just call and see what happens on the turn I, I think I yeah, okay, I would do that. Yeah, our, our direct odds are there. I'm sure we have lots of implied odds. Worst case scenario, actually, is if he has pocket jacks here, because then we're just getting screwed if the board pairs. But or sevens. We actually, yeah. yeah, or sevens, but we actually don't care if he has a straight that much, because we have all the board pairing outs plus uh, plus our straight out. So, uh, But regardless, even if he has a bigger set, obviously we have our straight out, so I think it's a pretty easy call. And, yeah, really interesting river with the jack pairing. Any checks here? I mean, I guess it's an easy shove. I don't know if we're ever going to get called by worse. That's kind of the problem. Like in PLO, yeah, it's really easy for somebody to have a set. Or, I mean, not really easy, but I mean, it's it's certainly possible given the action that player two puts us on a set. So with pocket sixes, this, I mean, I don't know. I well, mean, let's, we, let's think from... Yeah, let's think from his perspective. What hand is he check raising the turn and then uh, checking the river. I think four or five makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, pocket sevens, less sense. Pocket jacks, less and more. Uh, I, would, I would see him checking, checking quad jacks on the river here because, you know, he knows that then whatever we have cannot be the nuts. So we, we still could have some draws. So, I mean, so... Uh, some strong hands we could still that we can value better now as like so uh, smaller uh, full house that we feel safe about now because all the full houses actually because the because we don't we're not afraid of straight anymore and maybe some bluffs like if we have something like you know uh, five I mean eight nines with some eight nine ten something something like this so we we have no options to choose so. Uh, I would I would assume he has some uh, traps here as well on the on the river, but I would actually I would just put him on pocket jacks if I would assume uh, that he is trapping with. Uh, so, but I, I'm not saying he has exactly pocket jacks here, but if I think he would trap, that would be pocket jacks. Uh, mm -hmm. Pocket sevens, I think he would still be betting. So, um, so what do we do? Do we uh, what do we expect to be called from? Yeah, I think, you know, we're basically hoping to get, get called by a straight or pocket threes if he puts us on a hand like uh, like seven, eight, nine, ten, or something like that, I guess. Um, but I'm not too sure. I think it's pretty player dependent. Um, so I think checking back here could be fine. But yeah, I think shoving's fine too if, if we think that our opponent can put us on some bluffs. Because I agree, like he's probably not going to have a ton of slow plays on the river here. Um, but he should have some. But let's see what happens. And we do shove. And we do get called. So I assume we're going to lose. Otherwise, this hand um, probably five, wouldn't be posted. Four, five. No, we, we were called 4-5. Ah, easy, easy game. We win. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but I also think this could be this should be re-raised preflop, pre right? By Aces? Or yeah, but everyone's, the, everyone's pretty this, deep. So I think it's more standard to actually call. Um, with aces because people are so deep here if you pot it and you turn your hand face up uh, it's pretty hard to play post flop so you actually do see a lot of flats pre-flop with hands like this um, with with bigger double suited aces you, you're gonna see pots pot three bets pretty much regardless but with ace ace four five three spades I think it's actually pretty standard to flop yeah it's, flat, it's not that that, but, uh, that strong of an aces hand right but I like our play I mean I think we pretty much nailed it um, like I said, I mean, he is probably going to have a couple slow plays, but for the most part, he's going to have a straight. And there are hands that we can have that miss, like I was saying, like those those seven, eight, nine, ten hands or whatever. There's a few miss uh, miss straight draws, big wrap draws. So I, I certainly think we can we can get called, and obviously we did. So uh, there we go, PLO, uncharted territory. Yeah, you, you know, you know what I think. Uh, if I if I'm check calling this flop with four or five. Then on the on the jack, I think I check call again because you know it will be jack of spades first or jack of hearts of of diamonds. But now there is no flash draws, so we we almost 
only afraid of hand like 10, 9, uh, 8, which we are a favorite against. So I think I would uh, I would check on the check call on the 10 and then you know every every sets or two pairs should should feel pretty safe when I'm just check calling here. So I would then uh, on the on the jack pairing deliver I would just check call of course but on the mm -hmm. on the non non pairing uh, river card I would I would check raise then. Yeah, no, that's a good but, point. There are, there are so many board changing river cards that are going to put you in a nasty spot, like that being one of them. Um, but even some even some cards that make it so your straight is no longer the nuts, like you, even cards that make higher straights possible are going to make it really hard to value bet. So I agree with that, actually. But I'm not going to dwell on it too much because I don't think many people in this channel play PLO. So uh, I think we did our best. I think we did all right. But <laughs> let's try to get back to a hold them hand. Okay, so which one will it be now? Uh, I think next up is Luke M. Luke M five eight ninety. Yeah. And this is a six max five ten. Five cent ten cent. Yes. Okay, six sweet. max. We have eights. We have a nice stack. There is three players, a couple players that have uh, more than a hundred big blinds as well. Yeah, this must and... be a zoom table, maybe, with everybody being so deep. Uh, I'm not too sure. Klinkenberg, no, I think it's not. I think the name, oh, I don't know. I don't really remember the names of the uh, smaller zoom tables, so I'm not sure. But I don't think it matters anyway. Well, we're definitely raising here after one fold. We raise three times big blind. Uh, I would raise less, but this is perfectly acceptable. Um, and let's see what happens. We get called in one, two, two spots. So only you think uh, we know I now. I think we're looking at different hands here, dude. Really? No pocket eights? No, I got king four suited. What did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> let, me, let me just go back quickly. Uh, Luke, okay, maybe it was, it was Luke time. M, right? Yes. Just, uh, just like a couple lines, a few lines uh, below your... Cheers. I think I think you took the second one. There's one. There's one a little bit higher up. One more. Yeah, I think you. Oh I no, I, I took the second one. I, why do I always take the second one? I don't scroll up high enough. All right, let, let's take the pocket eight hand. Uh, okay, so we open a three x. Well, this this hand looks like pretty for a short one. So uh, yeah, the hand. Well, it's probably not short. It should be short. But. I I can't well, really we see get... doing anything else here, but but but. But just check. Check early. folding. Maybe it checks yes, through exactly. though. And we yeah, didn't eight. See. Look at that. But I, I really like I really like no C betting here. Because yeah. some people think when they raise preflop they need to represent whatever comes on the flop. And you know, they just want so badly to make other players to fold. Uh you know, like, okay, I'm gonna make him fold King Queen. No, you will not. He will call. Especially if you have position, he's not holding an ace, so this is just wasting money to making seabed here. So I really like the fact that we, you know, just don't blindly put a seabed here. And as you said, it gets checks around and we hit the jackpot on the turn. So now we're gonna bet. Yeah, I agree. We're gonna even get even fold. stuff like Jack Ten, King Jack, that stuff's not folding flop, and we're not really gonna know what to do on the turn if we see bet. So it's a pretty easy give up. Um, yeah, uh, on the eight, I think we got to start betting. Everyone checked through on the flop, so I don't expect too many people to randomly stab the turn, but I do think we can get called by a queen X, maybe some flush draws that turned, um, maybe some ace X that checked through, and we do get called. Um, I think we just bet out again on the river. I don't really see yes, the only, We only worry about Chuck 10, which would, uh, which would make sense because on the flop it was only gut shot. And with no overcards, but on the turn it was already double belly. So and it position that makes perfect sense. Uh, well, I mean it makes perfect sense, but doesn't mean that's exactly what other player has. I mean uh, because for uh, like after some reverse, let's say it would be five, and we cannot be afraid of those four, right? But if uh, at nine river we can be afraid of jack ten because that would make sense. And yet we, we we're not really worried about that. We should still bet. Yeah, I def definitely like betting the river here. If he has king-queen, king-jack, ace-four, like he's just going to check back, I think. 
Um, we might get a bat out of a Miss Flustra, that's probably it. Um, but I think more stuff is probably going to check back here than fire. So I think we'd bet. And like Greg said, if we get raised here, I actually think we could probably find a fold because I don't think we'd ever be seeing a bluff. Yeah, like we get raised pretty big too. I honestly feel like this is a fold. I, I don't think we're really ever ahead here. Like player one will basically be have to... He'll be basically well, I have to think that he's been slow playing ace queen or something and now he's just raising but i, I really don't think you are going to see that very often what, what what i meant is that we the jack 10 makes sense i didn't mean by that that this is you know the only hand that we play continue no but, of course not. yeah we of course got, not we we got uh, yeah that's that's pretty unusual big big race uh, definitely showing that there is no folding equity um you know that if someone would make like a race to free, let's say like free twenty, and he still have you know like seventy, sixty big blinds behind, so he can easily fold. And when someone makes a race like this, it's it's like almost like okay, I I would like to go for stacks here, but you know maybe you'll be afraid if I go all in, so I make a bigger race, but I don't fold. So whatever the player has, I don't really like this sizing because it's very hard to balance this kind of sizing with. With bluffs and and value hands and some medium hands, so it doesn't matter what he has. I don't like, but do we do we fold? Um, you know, some info on the player would be useful uh, if yeah, we totally. knew uh, how many hands he played, like how he played that, and and what what do we what do we beat? We beat sometimes, as you said, like something like ace queen or ace tray or pocket trays that were for some reason slow played, but most of the time doesn't make much sense because I think on the eight, which makes some draws possible, hands like this would like to raise. Uh, I mean, most of the time at least, I can see some slow plays as well, but most of the time I think they're raising. And what else? Uh, something like King Jack of Spades sometimes by some players. Yeah, I the can thing imagine is like, if we're, we're going to win here and player one's pretty like a good player i mean there, there definitely could be some stuff he's like turning into a bluff like queen jack but like you're not going to see that at these stakes very often I, especially with yeah, the so sizing I, was, I honestly feel like this is just the nuts like 95 percent of the I, time I, I think uh something like you know jack 10 uh, i mean quick uh, queen 10 here it's it's out of the question i i don't think it's going to happen on those stakes no. that players would like you know use it in the smart way plays like this so, uh, yeah, I would disregard this one, but I, I still think that it's, it's, it's more, more often at those stakes that someone would try to bluff raise, bust a draw like that. But I would still not make a big part of his range with hands like, with hands like this. So I would assume it may happen like, you know, like 5% of the time maybe and, and uh, something like ace-queen, ace-straight, any, any value combination here would happen. You know, like maybe ten or fifteen percent of the time as well, but the rest would be. Uh, well, how about pocket lines? Pocket lines makes sense as well, right? Yeah. If, uh, yeah, I don't. Check. I don't think he's bluffing. So the only thing that makes me sad here is if we fold, then he just is overplaying eight nine or ace queen or something like that. It, I really don't think he's ever bluffing. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Well, I, you I, said you said uh, you 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 can find a fault here. I think um, I, I I don't father. I mean I'm I'm not happy with the call. I'm definitely not raising, but I think at those stakes I would I would still call and just uh, you know say nice hand with your jack ten. <laughs> I mean in game who knows? I, I would probably do the same. But I but that's why it. that's why I say it as many times as I can say. If you you know want to treat poker more seriously, invest in some you know programs like Holder Manager even. You know, you just play ten hands with this player, and you already would have some idea about his plays. About you know, does he play a lot? Because versus you know, versus player who is uh, you know plays like sixty twenty. That, that's like I would even consider going all in here. So oh, of course, uh, yeah. So that's that's why what we. Um, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. I mean, like put it this way: if if he raises smaller. Like I think we're just we're just happily calling because then there's a much greater chance that he sh could could have a different hand for value. But I think with his sizing, like I don't know, maybe maybe I'm just seeing monsters. But I actually kind of like hero folding here. But no, I, I don't. It's not, I don't it's not, a, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a yeah. gonna be a huge mistake if you just call. I guess 
So let's okay. At least we get to see, at least we get to see to what win. he had. So let's find out. We okay. do call, and look at that. He had seven nine of spades. So okay, I would be so... throwing away money. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I, I can see. Well, in the spots like this, I think like okay, you, you know, you, you, you hit your river or something. You hit your like miracle river. That's great. Congratulations. But I'm still gonna call. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm not happy about this call. I expect to see uh, Jack Ten here most of the time. But for you know, it, it's not. Sometimes it happens like this. I would not. Yeah, seven nine was almost exactly what I said about King uh, King Jack of Spades. But King Jack of Spades would have additional outs as well. Would make more sense. Uh, but you know, assuming well, the call preflop wasn't that bad on this play. I think I would I would fold sometimes, but I would still also call sometimes. Mm -hmm. So preflop I can understand. Preflop doesn't say them any doesn't say us anything really you know particular about this player but would be super useful to know how this player plays and you know maybe base base the long uh had some information on this player and that's that's why he decided to make this call i don't know yeah no totally totally i mean of course it's, it's going to be your opinion is going to be swayed based on any kind of reason that you can have um yeah, no, I agree. It's just like, I mean, if we win, we're going to see something random, kind of random like this. I guess, I don't know if he was using his nine blocker or what uh, to rep pocket nines or something. But yeah, just the big race size on the river makes our pot odds that much worse. So I just think it's like less likely that yeah. we're going we to need to be right more, more yeah. as much as we need to. But who knows? Nice, nice call. I mean, I think, I think we played the hand pretty well. I mean, the river is up for debate, obviously, or, or just... You need more stats on the player to, to really know what to do, but I think yeah, I just just to make well. sure I'm I'm not uh, with the way he played this hand, I'm not I'm not jumping in my hand in in my in my chair to to, to see you know he raises it and I'm saying oh, I have a I have a set I'm I'm I gonna get I'm gonna win some money I expect here to lose more often than not so we were uh, you know just lucky that he uh, decided to choose this this kind of play. Mm -hmm. Yep. I agree, but yeah, really interesting hand. So thanks for, thanks for that one. So that was that was Luke. Um, and we have no more. Everyone has seen this uh, this this great meme and decided that actually they we no we, we had another one from uh, from Dan. We had one. Well. Yeah, let me bring it up. I, I didn't see it. <laughs> oh, sticking with the Star That's... Wars theme. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Wink is, is the only, only one. one. Hand rating. I like how you you look you look really good. Yeah, I in look this. good. In well, I, <laughs> I I I mean I like my hair here in this one. Yeah, great. <laughs> you have more hair, more hair as Yoda yeah, than you do now. I, yeah, I mean I like as Yoda I have more hair, so <laughs> yes, I like it. And oh, also that's my great. I like the shades. Uh, I should get myself a yeah. uh, uh, Jedi robe. It's a good look. Yeah, my ears is uh, are pretty accurate, and the the outfit is pretty accurate. So you know, I like it too. And also the green, yeah, the green sword means I'm on the good side. Uh, how about the blue yeah, one? I think we're both we're both we're both on the good side here. On the oh, because side. of Jedi, right? I don't know. Somehow you got better looking in this photo, though, Greg. <laughs> you than, look than, than in in real life, yeah. Yeah, uh, you, 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 look, I mean, you, you look even better than in real life. That's great work. Good Photoshop. Yeah, good Photoshop also with the with the green team. I mean, like my face is so green, like it should be as as Yoda, and this is how I look after you know playing one thousand hands in Zoom most of the time. <laughs> oh, this is I like great! This. I mean, I prefer the first one. I prefer the first one, but uh, yeah, I like the boots. I like the boots in the first one, but this one's pretty yeah. good. Oh, the boots! I don't. I even don't remember how. Uh, Let me see the boots there. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. So, I'm also so but tall. No. I like how I like how tall I am. Where's that? Maybe I can find the first one. <laughs> I can uh, send I, it. Yeah, here it is. Okay. Yeah, I like my outfit too. I mean, this is how I, I regularly. I, I mean, this is how <laughs> I I often uh, dress myself when I go to post office. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, someone must have seen me. This is. I think this is actually me, you know. Uh, it's not Photoshop. <laughs> you're definitely Photoshop. <laughs> That's not even Photoshop. That's just a picture of Greg. Well, you, a Sunday morning. You're, you're, 
Your haircut <laughs> is photoshopped for sure. <laughs> this is not your real haircut, right? Oh man, this is I'm crying. This is great. All right, let's <laughs> let's get back on track. So one more um, hand or what? Okay, that was oh man. Who was that again? I can't even remember at this point. Uh, yeah, that was Luke. I think we're on Hollywood poker. Probably got the wrong hand as usual, but I think that's where we left off. Wait, wait, we were we were on Luke, but on the wrong one or the we are on eight, we'll, eight, right? He, I think yeah, he posted we are two, eight, but so we'll just all, yeah. we'll skip his second one just to give other people a chance because okay, so Hollywood, Hollywood poker, right? Uh, yes, looks like a tournament hand. Uh, Sunday million, right? Uh, Sunday million. That's right. Still, f okay. so we got East Jack. Uh, how many big blinds do we have here? Almost thirty. Uh, twenty nine. We got 19, so, 19 big blinds. How come? Oh yeah, nineteen. Yes, you said nineteen. Math, yes. Because oh, okay. I said twenty nine. Yeah. You take the stack I, size and then you divide the stack size by the big blind. Oh, and it, it it's important. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, not not really. Especially in tournaments, it doesn't really matter. Okay, I said twenty nine. Well, of course, I meant uh, nineteen. Yeah. So okay, let's just see for sure that player number two folds, and it's it's to us. And okay, so there are, I think there are two schools of what to do in situations like this. One of the schools is like you don't really get engaged. Um, other, otherwise, don't go all in or fault when you have less than 20 big blinds. So this would be one of those situations that uh, some players tend to, uh, you know, let's say they have like ace king here or they have like poker tens and they don't even race; they just go all in. Uh, so the, you know, the the thinking behind this is they usually well they they don't they avoid avoid some situations that can happen, let's say they open and maybe big band calls Just and they miss their call. Oh, okay, where are you going? Just gonna go to the bathroom, get some water. I'm okay. Ah, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, let's pick an up and in the meantime, we can take over of uh, take over his channel. Okay, so the thinking behind this uh, going here all in our fault would be to avoid some situations that may happen, let's say we open here for two blinds and then maybe, you know, player seven, uh, well, maybe not player seven, but let's say player, player eight uh, goes over our race and because he thinks he has still folding equity, he does it with something like, you know, like king 10 suited or ace five suited or pocket fours. And he would never be, uh, he would never engage with those hands if we just go all in, he would just fold. So the, the idea here is uh, to don't let other players make you fold. But the risk behind this is, of course, that most of the time when we get called here, it will be better hand because we're going, going all in for uh, such, uh, well, I cannot say big stack, but biggish stack a little bit because normal all in here would be, let's say, like 10, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, big blinds that would be normal. That would be regular all in here, and when we go, when we decide to go on a bigger all in as well, then of course players that would call us should have uh, better hands as well. So we, when we go all in with Ace Jack here, we actually don't really like to be called, and when we get called, then we hope it's something like tens or nines, but most of the time it will be better hands than ours. So that's the risk behind it, and. Sorry, I didn't realize that you, uh, I, I got to move the hand along. Did you get to the flop yet? No, we're just talking about, we make, <laughs> we what we are you uh, talking about? Player two fold, folded, <laughs> and we are analyzing what he, what hands he could fold it from, from under the gun position. So, okay, <laughs> wow. so this is so, why I, <laughs> I would understand why some players would choose to go in here. I think on on with this uh, stack size, I, I think I would still find like uh, min raise and fold. And so you okay, would rather raise fold the ace jack than just go all in pre flop? Is that what you were saying? Or twenty blinds? Yes. Yeah. La, yeah it's less than stack size, right? Yes, exactly. For for as I said, like twelve, thirteen, I can go all in. I mean, I don't mind going all in here, but uh, I still can, I still can find uh, raise and and fold. 
here, but that's what I said uh, when you were going to, you know, pick up laundry or whatever you were doing at this time. But uh, the, the thing is that we, <laughs> we, when we just race, we put ourselves into a position that someone can, you know, free bite us with the hand that he would not engage if he would go uh, just only in pre flop. So this sometimes can happen, but that's the risk I can. I think we can take some time, and we get called by. Big blind only, and this hand has no history at all because we don't care what player one has. We go, we're just happy to stack off here on this flop. So yeah. let's see what happens. Player one checks, we should bet something. I would bet, you know, like I would bet like three and a half thousand uh, because I still want to balance my bets with some of the bluffs. If, if I would, for some reason, raise here with something like, you know, like. Uh, seven, eight suited. I would not, but let's say that something could happen. Uh, okay, four and a half is fine. What did you uh, say? Three get... and a half, so somewhere less than half pot. Yes, I would still go like this because this this would be my usual um, C bet size, right. and I would not 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 go different this time. We get check raised. Uh, what yeah, you know? It's, it's not has... great, but we're probably just going with our hand, right? Yeah, he, he doesn't have aces, he doesn't have, you know, doesn't have kings, ace, king. So, you know, if he was lucky enough to hit the straight here, then, you know, good luck to you. We still have some outs. Yeah, I agree. So, he could have flush rust. He could have king jack. Yeah. So okay, we do, so... We do put only, money in. I think this is a pretty standard. And he got, path. yeah. Yes, he got 10 high, so we, so we were good. And, and we, we just move on. To us. We move on to another, another tournament. Happy with our play. That's all I can say about this. No, I agree. Uh, uh, it's pretty standard this is, handball this play. Is, of course, this is uh, not nice for us. This is. I would go. I would be probably sad for like ten to fifteen seconds uh, <laughs> after this. Uh, this happened, especially that it looks it's already in the money in Sunday Million. But you know, nothing you can do. You, you, this is exactly how you was hoping this hand to. When you you know uh, to develop, you got yep. almost up to patch. Yeah. So no, I mean, sorry to see you having this kind of bad beat, but nothing you could do about this. Just yeah, I'm happens. not sure if there was really any any particular question about any uh, anything in this hand or, or why it was really posted because I think it was pretty obviously uh, pretty well played and pretty standard. So. If there was any question about folding the flop, I think the answer is clearly no. I think the results kind of prove why that is. And uh, I think I think we can get into a spot where we face King Jack, maybe like Ace 10. Like we can get ourselves into some pretty good spots here. Yeah, I mean, King Queen 10 makes sense as well, but you know, no, nothing we can do. Uh, cool. All right, let's move on. Um, that was Ollie Poker, I think. Where were we? Yeah, I'm trying to find that. Okay, I got it. Now we we get to the second hand of Luke, but we can skip it because he already had. Yeah, uh, let's, so let's skip it. Terra Chase. Give somebody else a. Yeah, sounds good. No Terra stats Chase, on this guy. No stats on that guy. Because I have history at 60, no limit. Okay, let's see this. All right, we'll, so we'll, we'll assume recreational. Um, we're playing. Uh, you want to start? Go, go ahead. Yeah, sure, I'll take this one. So we're playing 16 and L, 6 max, uh, king queen suited in the small blind. Uh, okay, so player 5 opens, player 6 calls, player 1 calls, and we squeeze. Um, like, there's nothing wrong with squeezing, I think we could call here too. Uh, we, we have a fine hand multi-way, don't really want to get 4 bet. Um, but yeah, I mean, squeezing is okay too. I mean, we can, we can, if player five folds, we're in a pretty good spot, I think, because we should be well ahead of player six or player one. But I don't know, I, I probably lean towards just flatting here and just taking the pot multi yeah, okay. because I, I do think we get four bet at some reasonable frequency. And people, because we're all kind of, are we a little bit deep? I guess we're not that deep, but we're a little bit deeper than 100 big blinds. Like, people might even flat ace king here or flat ace queen, and then we get into some tricky post flop situations. Yeah, what, uh, what, our, what we're basically doing here is turning our hand into bluff because we, we are not going forward uh, out of position 
Uh, I think I assume so, especially if player five free raises. But so th uh, that's why I would prefer to do this play with king queen off. But with queen, king queen suited, I'm I'm really happy to just call two and a half. Well, we have two blinds because we in the small blinds with with king queen suited. This is the hand that plays really well in multi-way po uh, pot. So uh, and if we risk not seeing a pot and not, uh, not seeing a flop here, I would prefer to do that with king queen off. Uh, strictly, you know, like a blocker kind of squeeze play, uh, yeah. blocker based squeeze play, and king queen suited. I mean, I know we have we are out of position and we don't like it, but that's why I would prefer with the hand like this keep the pole smaller. And I don't really see us calling a forward here out of position. And we have also the the player six has not. Uh, is a little bit short, text, short stacked here, so let's say player five would actually, you know, raising with something like, I don't know, like seven, eight suited, and he will fold, and player six calls, and he we we getting we're gonna be left here with awkward uh, stack sizes, and most of the time we will not hit anything with this king king queen. Yeah, I agree with all that. I think we gotta stop for a second because we got a picture here. Uh, Caleb oh. says, I might, I might get banned for this picture. I think I'm a meanie. I think I'm afraid to open this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to open it, but here I'm, we go. I'm, I'm not buying anyone. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> all right, one has all the money versus the other. <laughs> I guess, what, what is this? I have all these, I don't even like cats. What, what, what is it like? Why, why, do, why doesn't it say cat? It say like upgrades to remove the watermark. <laughs> yeah, I know. I assume that's supposed to say something. So does it actually say cats or <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's just like left, <laughs> you know the story is left untold. I look pretty good. I, I'm I'm actually I look I, look, I like my look as well. I look like yeah, I'm I have a lot of money. What you gonna do about it, bitch? That's the that's the look on my face. His hair though, let's be honest. Yeah, my my hands looks pretty, look pretty small though. I mean like I look I look a little bit like you know. Uh, why my head is so small? Oh, okay, oh, I yeah. think I get his cat reference now. I, I think I just like that totally flew over my head, but I think I get it now. One has oh, all really? the money. One has all the. You know, I think you. I think you can get what he's what he's saying. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Because of your outfit as well. All right, yeah. I, like, I like this picture considerably more now that I actually understand it. <laughs> all right, this is pretty okay. good. I, I, I don't think it's quite yeah, good that, as that's why, ones, but I think I got it. <laughs> and I that's, do like why, my, that's why I like he my was... chain, too. This is a pretty sweet. This is a good Halloween costume. Man. I don't know what that's I That's why that he was afraid the, of, of the... Greg, of a a like being... <laughs> I, you know, I, you know, my outfit, how I go to post office, this is, uh, this is, this would be the outfit when I, you know, like, uh, when I'm usually on the subway, like uh, six in the morning. <laughs> uh, this is, I, I want to do this for every stream is do a meme contest. It's, it's <laughs> great. It's way more fun than actually talking about the poker hands, <laughs> but let's, let's get back to it. I think, um, yeah, we, I think we covered. Pretty oh, well, right, get back to the hand. Boo. Boy, oh, yeah. Boo. Yeah, I think I think calling is probably a little bit better, but I don't think three betting is that bad. Like a player five folds and player six calls, like I think we're actually in a good spot. But no, I'm not saying it's bad. I would just prefer to do it with king queen off. Yeah. So okay, uh, flop comes down king jack seven two clubs. I probably just bet out here. I think we can get called by worse. Um, yeah. What, what? How? How much do you bet? Uh, in the in the in the squeeze squeeze pot or free bet pot. Uh, I think the latest tendency is to bet uh, on the smallish side, something like you know 35, 40% of the pot, because most of the time in free bet pots, it's uh, it doesn't really matter if you bet like four dollars here or or you know like 220, uh, and and it uh, it it lets you balance more your bluffs with your uh, value bets, and also make more confusion on the opponent's side because he is not sure why you're betting so small. Uh, so I would, yeah, before, like, if you ask me two months ago, I would even check here and let him bluff and just check call. But now I, I bet here, I don't know, like something like 175. <laughs> well, it depends on board textures mainly, I think, and it just depends on who has like the range advantage. So I don't think we need to be checking on this board because we have pocket kings, we have pocket jacks. Uh, it's not like a 10 queen nine board or something like that where... Player five is going to have maybe a range advantage, maybe, or maybe it's at least equal. But yeah, as far as sizing goes, like 
there's a flush draw out there, there's a few straight draws, but it's kind of a dry board. Just because the way ranges are in 3-bet pots, like, he's not going to have queen-10, probably. Uh, he's not going to have a whole bunch of flush draws, and he's going to have hands like pocket-queens. Uh, he's going to have a, maybe a hand like ace-queen. And those hands that we're ahead of, like, they're not going to have that much equity against us, like ace-jack. So, yeah, I agree. It doesn't make a lot of sense to go huge here. Um, I, don't think and also, go, I don't think we have to go really small, though, because, I mean, I, I don't expect our opponent to ever fold ace-queen here to a bet. I don't expect them to fold ace jack to one bet. So I think we can still get value and charge some gut shots, uh, charge some flush draws, things like that. Okay, the one thing I wanted to say is that uh, if he has a, actually would have a flush draw, then also I don't think it, uh, whatever we bet, he's going to call in position in squeezed pot with the extra money in the pot. So that's why I'm not really afraid of, you know, like, Giving him the right price, uh, right price to call with the flash draw because I don't think he's folding either way. And if I would be afraid of him, you know, having a good price, then I as well could just go all in here. If I would be so afraid of him, like you know, uh, calling with the flash draw. So of course that's that's uh, that doesn't make sense and uh, going all in here. But uh, that's that's my point when I'm talking about sizes. And we we actually get on the smaller size. Not that small as I was saying, but I, I like it that it's uh, not like, you know, three and a half. I really like it. No, I agree. I think half uh, pot's pretty good here. I think half pot's fine. Uh, sucks that we get raised. That's probably yeah, you know, that's, not that's what we're the, hoping for. That's the not happy part. But, um, you know, king queen of clubs, sure. That would be, I'll be happy to stack off. Uh, but now we just, we either losing really bad or we in the coin flip situation, I think, against some, you know, something like a ten of clubs. But that's that's probably we it could be then on the worst uh, part of the of the um, of the coin flip. And against sets, which makes sense in kings, of course, less likely. But jacks or sevens, or you know, like ace queen of clubs, or I don't know. We the problem is if we decide if we like decide to stack off here. Uh, if our opponent is bluffing, he will fold, yes. But, you know, if we get caught, we probably in very, very deep um, something here. I agree. On I, I agree. I don't like it. I think... Um... So, I I would actually, you know, for me, that would be easy fold now. I would just not worry about it too much. We did our job um, and... We we, we, I think we behind behind here, except the situations. Well, even if he's like sem, semi bluffing with something, you know, like ace nine of clubs. So just a flash draw. This would be like the best we can hope for. Most of the time, I think he would have some other option as well. So you know, like ace queen of spades, ace ten of spades, pocket sevens. Of course, uh, I mean that's not bluffing. That's the other kind of hands. But the the bluffing side. What what else could be like even nine ten of clubs. I'm not happy to stack up against this. Yeah, here, and most so. of those hands, most of those hands are just gonna call anyway. It's just the way people play in the in the games. These like they, nobody really raises those draws. They usually just call, um, and like I, th I feel like people just are afraid to fold here because they have top pair and they, they they think their hand is super strong and they might be getting exploited or whatever if they fold. But if you think about all the hands we're gonna have here, king queen is sort of up there, but it's not that high. We're gonna have ace king. We're gonna have jacks we're gonna have kings we're gonna have pocket aces like we're not it's not like this is the best hand we have in this spot so i agree i feel like it's actually a fairly easy fold uh somebody asked uh he said you said you can get called by worse here um but player five is the original razor so what do you really expect him to call with worse here i think there's lots i mean i already said uh ace queen uh ace jack is probably calling one uh he can have things like nine ten of diamonds which are always gonna call uh queen ten of diamonds or even any queen 10 that he calls preflop is going to call um so basically a lot of stuff with like backdoor flush draws or, or gut shot straights um <clears throat> maybe even he calls with like seven eight suited I, I would assume that hand probably calls one um so i definitely think there's lots we can get called by worse um, but when we, when yeah, we, get, raised, that, that, that when we hand, get raised is, is a different story that hand what you said like seven eight of diamonds that would be like you know that would be a perfect scenario for us but and i don't think many players would still do that that's uh, that's very like, I mean, 
I, seven, eight of diamonds, I think that actually make more sense to, to raise, I think. Like raise one and, and, and see what happens. I mean, it's, this, this would be turning the hand to the, to the bluff with the option of seeing two other cards when we just call. Uh, so I, I, could, I could see that, I would not do that, and I don't expect many players to do that, but that would, like this, even against this hand, uh, we're not in such an amazing, great shape, and this would be like really dream scenario for us. Uh, and also the problem is that our hand is pretty much, cannot get much better. Uh, okay, we can hit the second pair, but then we, we're still dead to, you know, to the, to the sets, or, uh, or actually the second pair may make, uh, that, that still could be a flash or the, you know, the straight for our opponent as well. Yeah. So we, we have, uh, even I think I would, if I, someone force me to go all in on this hand, like choose some different kind of hands we could have, then I would even prefer to have king, queen, like with queen of, uh, I mean, prefer, of course, prefer, but that would be better hand, king, queen of, with queen of, of, of uh, clubs. So we have at least some like additional equity in the runner runner style, but here we have nothing else. I mean, we have runner runner. Yeah, but if we have the, if we have the queen of clubs, we block flush draws. So I think we do want him to have flush draws in his range. But yeah, I just don't think this is going to. I think I just think the way people play, they they just usually call with their draws and just raise. Like I wouldn't be surprised if he has like pocket jacks here or uh, or maybe ace king. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, again, like I don't I, think he's raising guys king here, though. So. Yeah, I don't think if I was player five, I don't think I would really even have like a raising range in this spot very often. But let, I think we've set our piece on that, so let's see what happens. And we do shove. Yeah, I think calling is probably going to be quite a bit better than shoving. But I, I just don't expect player five to have very many bluffs to begin with, so I don't think it matters a whole lot. And player I'm five a, does I'm call. Yeah, he has ace queen of 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 clubs. So one of the hands we're talking about, one of the hands I'm really not happy to stack off against with king oh, queen. Uh, <laughs> uh, but this, uh, you know, uh, do you, do you have like some poker calculator on your next to you so you can see the equity on the the, the yeah. percentage of on the flop? So yeah, you can we're, check we're, this out, but you know this. We're gonna be a pretty good favorite yeah. against Ace Queen of Clubs, I think. I'll, I'll plug it in there. Yeah, not not a huge favorite, but I think we'll be a pretty sizable favorite against this hand. But this is kind of what I it would was be with, in terms of like I think like it's better. That we, or I think it's better that we don't have the Queen of Clubs in our hand because then at least at least he can have the Ace Queen of Clubs. Like if we have the Queen of Clubs, well, I mean, we guess we have more equity when he has a set, but not when he has. Um, or it obviously blocks his flush draws. So let's see here. I don't know, like 58, 52? I, I am surprised. I mean, I was, I was pretty much completely wrong about saying that people don't don't raise these draws as often. I mean, I think I'm right. I still think on, on the most part, or for the most part, people would just call here with, with ace, queen, and clubs. Because I don't think it's... That's why I said I wouldn't really have a raising range if I was player five here, because... I mean, it's a pretty good board for the preflop three better. So if you're going to raise your draw here, like you need to expect to be jammed on pretty often because you're going to just run into ace king, aces, sets. So I don't really like the way he, the ace queen played this hand. Um, so let, let's see what kind of equity we had on. Was it, yeah? Why did I put the turn in there? We uh, we need to no, take the that flop, out. flop, flop equity. Yeah, yeah. So we have forty five percent. We're not even a favorite. I was wrong about that too. You were right, Greg. Uh, because of the of ace as well, ace ten and and clubs. Ace queen of clubs and... is actually a fifty four percent favorite over our hand here. So we actually didn't even get the money in good, and that's pretty much the best case scenario, right? Like I mean, I yeah, ace, see, like, ace queen of uh, clubs or ace ten of clubs or even you know something like the combos of the nine eight nine ten ten eight suited with with clubs when they also when they have double belly. Uh, gut shot as well and this is the best we can hope for because most I mean so this is we're still in bad shape here and he and, and, and a big part of his range will also be sets that we are pra practically dead against so or, or King Jack something like this so you know like we were really lucky here and in general stacking off on this kind of uh, after this kind of action on this kind of board texture we will be losing money so yep. I don't recommend that play. 
I agree. Uh, um, but yeah, I think that, I think that probably that probably surprises people, like including myself. Like I, I knew the equities were close, but I, I thought the king queen was actually the this. I thought the equities would be reversed. I thought we would have the 54, 55 percent edge, but ace queen actually has it. So um, yeah, I mean that that's interesting. Definitely, do you know? That's probably surprised a lot of people. Yeah, do you know we have another another uh, meme, and this okay. one includes only the important people on the stream, Whoa. but I think it's really amazing uh, Photoshop job here. All right, let's check I've it made, out. Yeah, I've seen it already and it's it's really <laughs> impressive uh, photo, Photoshop. That is pretty good. Uh, that is pretty good. Yeah, I I like it and I may use it. I may use it on my on my stream in some way, but the, the only thing I don't like is uh, I'll be back. Uh, because it, it would like suggest that you know like something went wrong and I'll be back. <laughs> but I, ju I just uh, I just sent you the graph of my challenge if you want to show it like to the to the people because some of them were asking if we actually playing No Limit Two so I can show yeah, how it how is going Make for that me. To an I'll brag. No, it's not about bragging. It's about like you know, like uh, because I started this challenge at no limit two and my, my with two hundred, so hundred big binds, uh, hundred binds, and the idea was to to finish it at at five thousand at no limit fifty, which would be a hundred big binds on higher stakes. And uh, oh yeah, that's that's actually really that's good, a good point. That's a good suggestion. Yeah, put the picture. Yeah, that's going perfect suggestion. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's yes. That's I mean I need to talk because the picture was posted by my uh, my subscriber. Uh, but yeah, that would be that would be a really nice idea. I can I need to just ask about you know can I use this picture because it's not mine. But if he doesn't I'm mind, sure he wouldn't mind. Then I can use it as on the break. It makes makes a lot of sense. So but the thing was. Uh, no, no, no! Don't, don't, don't change it that bit. It's, it's actually pretty good. Only I didn't. I, I'm slow at, you know, understanding things. So now I get the idea, and it's, it's actually pretty smart to put it on the break. Uh, and what I wanted to say is that some people were saying that, uh, you know, they cannot play on no limit two because uh, people go crazy and Russians go all in there with ten seven. That was the idea of behind going for this challenge, so I can actually show that it's good that players are playing bad and with bad cards against us and it's always better to play against bad players with bad cards and than to play with good players good players with good cards. So if you if you if you want to show the, the graph uh, because we have now requests as well so you can show it and then we can you know this is can you can my, you my way I just I, I don't know where to I find just, it. I just I just posted it uh, on your Skype. Should I send uh, send can't somewhere go into else? Skype though without losing your visual, uh, like without losing your webcam because I have a window capture on it right now. Okay, so how, how just post I... it in the chat. Oh. Okay, but this is uh, that I need to upload it somewhere because it's on the. It was just a regular. Uh, okay, maybe I just post it on my Facebook or something. I don't know. Uh, okay, I send you on Facebook. Can you do that? If I send you on Facebook? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, frosty one or you know, which which yeah, which? Yeah, just, uh, uh, sure. Go ahead and send me on Facebook, and I'll uh, I'll find it. So not on fan page, just your you know super private Facebook. Uh, yeah, exactly. Is it posted on? <laughs> is it just posted on your? Uh, no, I want to page? send. I will I can only find it. No, I don't. I don't have the latest one. This is the latest one it's from today. All right. Okay, I just. Yeah, I just sent it to me on Facebook. I just did. All right, I'll grab it. <laughs> this technicality is in progress. <laughs> yeah, I see it. All right. And David agreed that I can use this photo. That's cool. Sweet. Thank you very much. This is really nice. I need to like download it. It's really. Really good job. Now I don't know which one I like the most. I mean, well, the idea was to post two of us in the pictures. So I, I still think we cannot pick this yeah. one as a winner. Uh, I will I will contact Danbit and I, I will figure something out with him so he don't so but, he gets something of it as of it as well. 
but the winner would be different and I don't know I would go for the first one what do you think I agree I think I think they're all pretty good uh, even the even the one with you with all the money and me with the cats uh, but I think I like the first one the best too <laughs> That's so, cats. Thanks yeah, for that, Dan Witt. And we'll uh, we'll be sure to get you ten bucks on Poker Stars for the meme. So this oh, is that was Dan as well. Was that? So the, the the winner with the Star Wars was Dan Witt as well. I didn't. I forgot even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was him. So okay, maybe just uh, just message what message Greg your screen name. That'd be the easiest yes. way to do it. And I and I share it with you. And yeah, sounds good. So, anyways, this, Greg, this, this is your graph challenge is, after, for, is, this, is this all at two no limit? Yes, this is all at two no limit. I'm at nineteen, almost exactly nineteen thousand at the moment after today's stream. So the the orange line is EV. So this is what we would expect to get, but we are actually on the green side. Yeah, you're right. Uh, on green. Yeah. So and I'm moving up to no limit five when I get to one hundred. So. According to EV, I should already do that, but uh, we still wait for something more. I think I'm like eight pints away or something. So it should be, you know, like within a week or something. I do stream this challenge twice a week, 500 hands uh, each day. So how many yeah, that's are you how playing? Are you playing? And you're playing? I just Zoom? yeah, I just play two Zoom tables, just two Zoom tables because I still want to have some time to explain my plays and, and say, uh, like answer to this different uh, things as well. So I don't want to put too much things to happen on the screen. But you know, like, and this is what you what you should expect at No Me Too, I think it's uh, <laughs> Do you know um, what your just, big blind per 100 is right now? Uh, Adam is asking about, in the chat. It's about 20. It might really be like a couple less or a couple more. I'm not sure at the moment. but. Actually, I can check, but uh, this is de this is definitely not like bragging or something. This because I don't do anything like when people are watching my stream, my stream they know I don't do anything crazy. I don't go for like you know like some amazing squeeze type of <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's not how you win at those stakes. Uh, Jiu Jitsu, actually, overhead kicks, anything like that. I don't do that. Made me curious. Uh, I'm trying to look into my. I think I probably just screwed up all the all the uh, windows there, but I want to look into my database and see how I'm doing at two no limit this year. Cause I played a lot there too, just from my uh, okay. ladder challenges and things like that. So, now I'm so I, have, I have exactly 19,498. So almost exactly 19,500 hands. And this is uh, not EV, but my actual wins is 21.6 PP per hundred. Yeah, and as I said, good. I had some. I'm still below EV here, so that's also you know like something to consider. And I had some crazy hands. People playing crazy way against me, I think, as well. But it's like uh, you know, it's the two-sided sword with that. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's uh, it's not so good. So the you know the the reason of this challenge was to show people. That you can start at the micro stakes and go up, and you, you just cannot complain about some crazy players going all in with queen eight because it's good for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a pretty big sample size at two and all here this this year. Um, let's see if I can bring it up. Oops. I'm not doing quite as good as you. No. Wow. Oh. But uh, yeah, I played 54,000 hands this year at two no limit. I don't know if you can see that very well. Oh, 54,000, that's like, yeah. what is it, like three times more? I don't see it yet, but I think it was Yeah, and this is like more. when I was doing like my cash game challenge and my ladder challenges. So I played a ton there. And uh, I was winning at almost 13 big blinds per hundred. So no to Warsaw, but it's over a bigger sample. So we'll see what your big blind turns out to be. Also, I was playing a lot more tables at once. I was playing like, 10 to 20 tables at once so the, the win rate is going to be lower but yeah no i'm totally yeah, with you that the i mean the people that are are saying that they would rather play against better players than than crazy players just don't know how to adjust properly or they're probably just losing over a really small sample size and are putting way too much weight or, into that yeah or, or really bad bankrupt management because they you know when someone complains about some bad players that's usually because they they cannot afford to lose 
so they let's say they have ten dollars, they go for an only mid two, they lose a couple of hands in unlucky way and, and they uh they just unhappy. Uh and when they start to, to challenge like like I do with hundred big uh buy-ins when I, I don't really care about you know, losing like two, three, four, five, ten unlucky hands in a row because I know I'm gonna get it, get this back sooner or later. So I can just stick with my game. And some of the people just uh, they just get frustrated easy because they you know they they cannot afford to lose. And in and I I just don't care about that. Not not because I play on the higher stakes normally, but because the because of the you know like the the idea behind my challenge that I started with 100, 500 buyings. Well, of course you don't care. Look at all the money you got. Look at that gif. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that gif. That gif is, is great. <laughs> all right, so what, what do we want to do here, Greg? It's, it's 6.20. This has been going on for like two and a half hours, so we're already over time. Uh, how, yeah, how are you feeling? Do you want to do a few more slowly... hands or what? No, I think we can just slowly ra ra wrap it up. Uh, I don't mind to do it again. But I prefer to do it like two hours uh, each time instead of going for like five hours and be, you know, really tired. I think we we did some good work. I mean, we did some. We had some nice hands too. Uh, I agree. Yeah. That gif is is awesome. <laughs> we can <laughs> we. I mean, we can stay like for half an hour and just stare at this gif. That would that work fine. <laughs> Absolutely with me. not. No <laughs> also, yeah. If you if you guys want to play against us. Uh, this Sunday is Team Online, Team Pro Online free roll. At uh, I think it's 1:30 your time, or or maybe it's I think the time will be switched back. So oh, it's 10:30 Pacific usually. Oh, 10:30. Okay, it's 7 7:30 uh, p.m. on on Central European time. So I think we can wrap wrap it up. I think we had some uh, some fun. I hope. Uh, with yeah, our I, viewers. I, think, I hope I really enjoyed, enjoyed it. The... I know there were a lot of hands, so I, I apologize if we didn't get to your hands, guys. There were definitely quite a few that we missed. Um, but yeah, I mean, if if we get good feedback on this format of streaming, I mean, I'd like to do it again in the future. Have Greg back on for sure. Probably do it. Maybe even next. We could even do it next month. I, I think for sure I'm going to do it a couple times with. Uh, with a couple of different people. I mean, it's a lot more fun for me to, to have what? somebody you to mean, interact with. You, you mean you invite different people than <laughs> you invite someone else? How, how yeah, dare man, you? You were, uh, you were the only one I could get for this. You were you were bottom of the list. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, yeah, I was the only one that didn't refuse, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were the only one that would do it. No, uh, no, always good to have you on, Greg. I, I know that people love the six max and the, and the tournament, so... Uh, I'm sure people people were into this, and thanks for bringing along all the Polish followers. Uh, thanks for all the followers today, guys. I know I didn't really give anyone a shout out because there's too much. Will you on, but... will you upload this to YouTube? Because I would be yeah. happy to share this. Yeah, sure. I I, I uploaded the one I did with uh, Celeste, and I think I'll upload this one to YouTube as well for people that maybe came in halfway through or missed it entirely. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm I'm pretty tired too. So with that, why don't we uh, why don't we call it a day? And uh, you can catch Greg. All his links are up there on the overlay. His Twitter is at the Warsaw, Facebook, Gregor's Miki Elowitz. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how butchered was that? Uh, that was uh, that was pretty close. Uh, yeah, that was close. That was okay. Nice. Say it. Thanks for effort. Yeah, that was nice. No, I want to hear you say it. How do you say it? Oh, it's Gregor's Mikielewicz. Okay, I was close. Um, yeah. Is a YouTube channel. I, I just said put search you uh, search to Warsaw. It's the easiest way to find it. Yeah, that Warsaw Twitch. Poker is the best way to find it. And same I need to Twitch, change. Just uh, search to Warsaw and find his channel. All right, guys. Well, uh, yeah, I guess the month's almost over, so I'll be posting my streaming schedule for November pretty soon, and you can catch Greg on his channel as well. So, uh, thanks for doing this, Greg, and thanks, guys. Uh, I'll catch you later, and hope you guys enjoyed the stream.